The story begins when Daryl is summoned by the new king of brilliant fire named Bashabaza who happens to be his adopted brother. In front of the other three kings, he gets dismissed from the demon king's army but he thinks he's been relieved of his position as their assistant. They all insult his comprehension skills before telling him plainly that he has been fired from the army. Baskabaza explains that Daryl is at the bottom of the lowest ranks in the army, it was already strange that someone of his class was allowed to assist them so closely. Among the long list of incompetence is his inability to use magic, Bashabaza proceeds to display his superior manipulation of fire magic. But Daryl protests stating that the former king who happens to be their father gave him a mission that he must complete, but his brother cuts him off with a fire blast and points out that the old timer has retired. They have no place for someone who can't use magic in this new demon king's regime. As part of his cloak burns, he extinguishes it before officially announcing his departure. Since ancient times, demonic beings have always clashed with humans but both species look identical so the only way of differentiating between the two is that demons can use magic. This guy can't use magic despite belonging to the demons. As he leaves the HQ, one of his commanders tries to tease him for being the weakest, but he just walks off into the world. Some time has passed since his dismissal and Daryl aimlessly wanders around the forest trying to figure out what to do with his life now. He's been serving in the Demon King's army for all 32 years of his life and wonders if he can even start a new life. His face is sunken from hunger and his stomach rumbles because he has not eaten since he has been kicked out. Daryl collapses to the ground from exhaustion and frustration when Marika's scream draws his attention toward the cliff. Suddenly, she emerges from the bushes and jumps over him as their eyes lock together. Not long after her appearance, a beastly roar follows as a giant silver monkey shoots out and attacks her. Daryl deduces that she's being chased, as the monkey prepares to finish her off, he dashes in between her and the blow to block it. He orders her to move out of harm's way as the beast retreats momentarily, the unemployed guy struggles to recover because he's hungry, but he feels like a soldier must reassure a woman who's in danger. As they square up, Daryl starts speculating on how if it was a proper demon in his position, they would have defeated it with ease. He is compelled to attack without powers as he rushes towards the monster hoping to fight it with melee style combat, but the hunger strikes again as his legs gives out. This gives the monkey a clear opening to land a devastating blow that sends the disgraced knight flying. He lands near Marika's scattered belongings where he glances over and spots a dagger. The washed up soldier hesitates to use the human weapon as it's a big shame for a demon soldier to do so. He quickly rethinks that stance given his situation and grabs the dagger ready to attack, but he struggles to find the right way to wield the weapon as he changes his position. The giant monkey is not there to play games so it lunges forward to finish him off but Daryl braces himself and thrusts the blade into the section of the monster's chest that already had a scar. His teacher is definitely Roronoa Zoro, shout out to the moss head. Marika gasps in shock as the monkey crashes to the ground dead, Daryl states that he just imitated a hero he saw in the past and is surprised that it worked so smoothly. He wipes the blood off his face when Marika interrupts and formally thanks him for helping her. She compliments Daryl by comparing him to the strongest hero of all time. But that confuses the ex-soldier as demons can't be heroes, with the monster dead she calmly packs her things back into her bag. Daryl tries to leave the situation before things get troublesome, but Marika grabs him by his cloak which chokes him as she pleads for him to hold on. She invites him to her village so that she can thank him properly by treating him to a delicious meal. The thought of food makes him pause his struggle, and his stomach also rumbles loudly to prevent his mouth from lying about not being hungry. Marika takes his singing stomach as a yes as she drags him along, they finally arrive at her hometown of Locke's village. The young lady takes him to her house where he's introduced to her mom and dad. Marika also formally introduces herself, Daryl is sure to commit their names to memory, but he's starting to get worried since he is in enemy territory. The guy suspects that they might kill him if they find out that he's a demon, so he reminds himself to tread lightly. Marika asks his reason for being in the forest, so he explains politically that he got fired from his job by the second generation of his employer. It was a job that provided him with accommodation so he's homeless. She is already in tears listening to his story and offers that he stay in their village and even gives him a room in their house for him to lodge and since he's such a good person for saving her, clearly she's fond of him. He thinks it's a bit too far as the promised meal should be more than enough for him, but she's adamant and even asks her dad for permission, he thinks about it for a moment before agreeing. The old timer states that their village is lacking people so having someone who can defeat monsters is very welcome. 
Internally, he feels like the family should be suspecting him more since he's a stranger. Marika takes his hands, pleading with him to stay, but Daryl is conflicted because they are enemies, so he's wary in case his cover gets blown. But after one look at Marika, he decides to take the risk and stay by accepting the offer like a gentleman. His stomach rumbles again, so he pleads for them to bring him some food before they finalize everything. That night, he lies in bed thinking about his new environment and compares his current room to the grand room he had back in the Demon King's castle. His thoughts are interrupted by Marika who knocks on his door and thanks him again for saving her. She's used to many people relying on her, so it was nice to be saved for a change. After her speech, she bids him good night and rushes off to bed, meanwhile Daryl ponders on how strange it is for a demon to save a human girl. The following morning, Marika's father alerts the newcomer that he has a job for him. He's more than willing to help with anything, Envil reveals that he's the guild master of the village. So he wants Daryl to be an adventurer and shows him a seal on his hand. The father explains that an adventurer is registered to the guild and their job is to defeat monsters and gather medicine and other items. Before he can finish explaining, Daryl cuts him off and asks if there aren't any other jobs he can do instead, like farming. Envil declines since he has a nice healthy body, he presents the guild registration form which is what Daryl was dreading. It is a ritual only humans can pass so he pretends to be injured to dodge the registration, otherwise they will find out that he's a demon. Envil orders his daughter to help him, Daryl thinks that she is about to assist him with his back pain, but she pricks him with a needle which draws a little bit of blood. She guides his hand to the registration form, he starts to panic that his cover is going to get blown as the form starts to react to his blood. His body starts to feel hot as magic signs start to glow purple while covering him but after a brief moment, it turns to yellow as it dissolves to create a seal on the back of his hand. Daryl is shocked because he was raised by demons for his whole life, so he thought he was a demon but he is actually a human. With the registration complete, Envil takes him outside to move on to the next phase of things. Before they start, Marika warns him that her father used to be an adventurer so he should be careful, they look over to see him swinging a giant mallet skillfully. He first starts by explaining how to handle aura, which is a power all humans originally possess. Adventurers can wear their aura on their armor and fight. He prompts him to pick any weapon he pleases, so he goes for the sword. While holding it, he feels the aura coming out of his body as he thinks back to how his adopted father taught him how to do mental training to be aware of one's mana. But he didn't feel anything back then. The father and daughter watch on impressed that he was able to manifest his aura so quickly. With that stage passed, they move on to find out what type he is. The old timer informs him that there are four types of application of aura which are slash, sting, hit, and block. An adventurer's affinity to one will determine which weapon they should carry. They start by testing his compatibility with the slash test. Ironically this is his first time holding a sword since he only worked as an assistant while in the Demon King's army. He looks over to Marika who gives him some encouragement before he takes a swing. Envil assures him that it is not a must for him to split the tree trunk in two, even if his sword gets halfway through it would indicate that his strongest type would be slash. Daryl closes his eyes and takes a swing with decent technique and cuts the tree trunk in two with ease to his and everyone's surprise. He feels the power of aura rushing through his body. They move on to testing his affinity with sting by a archery, he's to try and hit the apple from distance, so he releases the arrow and the power behind it blows away the apple along with the trees behind. Envil watches on in disbelief as he wipes his eyes while his mouth is wide open, Marika gives him a hug for hitting the apple the first time. Envil is shocked to see someone blessed with affinity to two types. He praises Daryl but the old timer is a bit salty as he clenches his teeth together in frustration. The next test is hit, so with the giant mallet, he easily destroys the boulder and even knocks the guild master back. Marika's father lays on the floor crying out of jealousy that he also has an affinity to that, in his 30 years as an adventurer he has never seen anyone like Daryl. Envil angrily orders Daryl to get a shield for the last test which is block. The guild master sees this as an opportunity to take out his pent up frustration at Daryl, so he decides to use an iron mallet to attack the young man. Daryl is a bit worried seeing this as he's holding a wooden shield, but before he can fully voice it out, Envil attacks with full strength as tears stream from his face but Daryl blocks it and even sends the guild master flying back. With all the testing complete, Envil concludes that Daryl's aura fits every aspect perfectly, but the young man doesn't understand how rare it is, he explains that he has never seen anything like this before. 
Daryl finds all this strange because he couldn't use magic and he is used to being seen as weak. Envil informs him that he can go very far with his unique skills and feels that it would be selfish of them to keep someone so talented in this small village. He suggests that he joins the Center Guild which is the top organization that every adventurer wants to join. He promises to give him a reference letter which would aid in his recruitment. Daryl looks over and sees that the thought of him leaving makes Marika sad so he decides to stay and serve them since they gave him a place to live when he was homeless. This makes her so happy as she hugs him, Daryl looks on with excitement to start his second life. Envil gathers the rest of the villagers, and it is revealed that he's also the village chief. He officially introduces Daryl to everyone as their latest member of the village who will also be an adventurer, so if they have any problems, they are free to report it so that the newcomer can assist. The young man also does his introduction, and the people are happy with his politeness as they were worried since he was an outsider. Kashida heckles that he doesn't like the new guy, he feels like Daryl is too old to be an adventurer, this offends him a little as he doesn't feel like he's old. Envil orders him to stop being rude to his new comrade, it is revealed that Kashida is a D-rank adventurer. He looks down on Daryl when he finds out that he has the lowest rank which is an E-rank, so he mandates that Daryl shows him respect. Envil pleads for him to have patience and explains that Gashida is arrogant since he is the only adventurer in the village so thinks he's doing a unique job. He later summons Daryl to the office and gives him a lot of requests that have come in to gather some herbs they have piled up because Gashida thinks he's too big to take them. The guild master warns him to be wary of a ferocious beast that his senior has been trying to take down for about half a month. He shows them the poster and to their shock, it's the monkey he defeated earlier, Envil is even more surprised when they alert him. Things continue at a later date when some adventurers come across the corpse of the monkey monster, Chief Envil gets a report which confirms Daryl's extermination. He stamps the contract as complete while he reprimands Kashida for slacking off too much, which has allowed Daryl to take down the monster for him. Envil instructs him to thank the newcomer for the help, Kashida glares at him with frustration as he thanks him, but Daryl is aware that this incident is going to cause a problem between the two of them. The young lad quickly picks up the next monster contract and notices that Daryl has the contracts for herb gathering so he starts to make fun of him for doing such low-level quests. As he leaves, he declares that he will prove that he's better. To add insult to injury he calls Daryl an old recruit. The newcomer alerts Envil of his departure but the guild master holds him for a moment. He takes his hand which activates his rank. The old timer then proceeds to cover it and Daryl winces for a moment before Envil alerts him that he has been granted a promotion. He is now a D-rank adventurer, this is his reward for defeating the monkey and protecting the village. Marika interrupts as she jets out of her room thanking Daryl for waiting for her, he informs her that she doesn't need to follow him on the quest. Marika feels like he still doesn't know the area too well since he's new, so someone has to be his guide for the time being. The two set off and he still expresses his worry for her safety as it's dangerous outside the village, hence the need for adventurers. She reveals that there is nothing to worry about as some villagers also enter the forest, they only commission adventurers to go to the deep parts of the woodlands that have the dangerous monsters. As they proceed, they come to a cliff that they must traverse, Daryl is surprised that she can climb, Marika discloses that she wanted to be an adventurer in the past because she wanted to help her village. This explains why she was brave enough to go deep into the forest. Marika discloses that an old lady got sick and Gashida refused to go get the herb, so she was forced to go. They reach the top of the cliff, and she requests that they hold hands so that they don't get separated. Daryl is reluctant because he is a Sigma, but she finally gets her way as they proceed forward hand in hand. The two reach the area where their target herbs grow, Daryl uses the picture on the contract to pick them, but she notices that he has been picking the wrong type as the one on the picture has jagged edges. She also instructs him on the proper way to harvest sustainably and gets flushed when he thanks her. As they continue, she casually lifts tree trunks like she goes to the gym five times a day, and she spots deer tracks that would be impossible for the average adventurer to notice. Even Daryl doesn't see anything on the floor, but he's not surprised since she's the daughter of a guild master. She decides that they should pause the herb picking and hunt the game for the meat. Looking at her strength, he asks her why she didn't handle the monkey when it attacked but she reveals that she's scared of fighting. She still sees him as her savior but she requests that he stop referring to her in such a formal way as it makes it look like they are strangers, but in his mind, they still are. He tries to address her more casually but he's unable to. She hugs him with her super strength and calls him mean for not heeding her request. He manages to get her off him when he spots the deer by fluke, so he draws her attention to it. They observe the animal, 
but it suddenly becomes hostile and dashes into a bush nearby. The two watch as the deer starts to fight a nearby monster Bruce Lee style to their confusion. The duo draws their swords to attack the creatures while they are preoccupied. They off-screen the deer and the monster and bring their carcass back to the village which draws a crowd. Daryl tries to downplay their achievement, but Gashida looks at him lividly. With tears in his eyes, he runs off crying leaving the contract behind, turns out that Daryl accidentally hunted his prey again. As the days go by, Daryl starts to get used to life in the village, mostly getting by without any problems. One day he makes his way to the guild hall and meets Gashida coming out, Bootleg Zoro frowns his face and tries to bump into Daryl but bounces off him. Daryl offers to help him up but he knocks his hand away and storms off angrily. The newcomer just assumes that he's stressed and proceeds into the hall. Marika is there to greet him warmly and offers him some food trying to look cute, but he just brushes past her to Envil and informs him that he has finished collecting all the herb gathering requests. The guild master is worried about Gashida since he's having a rough time at the moment after Daryl took his target twice. Daryl expresses his remorse, but Marika feels differently stating that it is not his fault as it is only common sense to hunt monsters when possible. The father agrees that adventurers from the same guild should cooperate but that is but a small part of his concerns. He presents a contract that came as an emergency when Gashida was around. It is a monster snake called the Blaze Death Scythe that is only available to C-rank adventurers and higher. It is far more dangerous than the other two Daryl took out. The flyer has only been sent as a warning to the village since the location of the monster is so close, but adventurers from a higher ranking guild in the next village are planning to deal with it. As long as Gashida has seen the contract he will try and get involved somehow even though he's only a D rank. But Envil ensures them that the neighboring guild's party has already surrounded the monster in a large area so it shouldn't come anywhere near them. Marika worries that Gashida could still enter the area which would cause a headache for the guild master if things went wrong. Daryl offers to go keep an eye on Gashida to prevent him from doing something stupid. Marika offers to tag along but he rejects it as this one is a lot more dangerous. Although she's disappointed, she prepares some supplies and medicine that would be useful if he were to encounter the monster snake. He sets off and while he looks for Gashida, the weather starts taking a turn for the worse which matches his uneasy feeling. When he was in the Demon King's army, he always regretted ignoring this feeling and it seems like it was right again. He reaches a clearing in the woods that has been created by the snake. He wonders what happened to the large party that was supposed to keep the snake in check. His attention is suddenly drawn behind him when the ground begins to shake. Gashida can be seen running towards him as he's being chased by the snake. The shout of the monster forces Daryl to activate his shield. Looking at the situation, he has no other option but to engage the serpent. He draws his sword and activates his aura, but the monster just ignores him and tries to attack Gashida. Walmart Zoro stands his ground but his arrows aren't imbued with enough aura to do damage. He stands there frozen in fear as the snake drives in to finish him off. All he can do is cover his face ready to accept his fate. Daryl springs into action launching himself into the air to intercept the monster's attack. Gashida notices his humongous aura as he slashes the snake in the eye. The newcomer does enough damage to stop the attack on his colleague. It retaliates with a powerful tail attack, but Daryl activates his shield and blocks even bracing further with his sword. The basic blade shatters into many fragments from the force and pressure of the assault. Sensing the opportunity to finish him off, the snake rushes towards Daryl with its mouth wide open ready to devour him like a Big Mac. But he calmly assesses the situation and ponders on the right technique to counter with. The guy decides to use both hit and sting as he grabs the tip of his broken blade. He fires his improvised attack into the mouth of the monster. Gashida watches in awe as the blow pierces through the snake and carries on for a few more meters as it clears the trees in its path. It lays there vanquished just as the rain starts to fall. The young lad can't believe that Daryl managed to defeat it as it outranks him. The newcomer also sits down to catch his breath after that difficult battle. But his respite is short-lived as Gashida winces in pain from the snake bite. Daryl quickly moves him under a tree to shelter him from the rain. Gashida proceeds to cry fearing for his life as Daryl washes his wound before giving him an antidote that Marika prepared in anticipation for this incident. He assures him that he's not going to pass away and grabs an herb from the forest floor squeezing its juices onto his wound before placing the leaves on it and bandaging it with his sleeve. Gashida is curious to know how he knows all of this. The guy explains that during the herb gathering missions, 
Marika taught him a lot about the different kinds of plants and their uses. After some wise words from Daryl, Kashida starts to cry feeling guilty and ashamed of his behavior. The rain stops and the sun starts to come out probably a metaphor for the change that Kashida has just undergone. With his life out of danger, Daryl finally decides to lie down for a moment before they make their way back to the village. The following morning, Marika makes a feast for the family to enjoy. They are interrupted by Gashida who now calls Dyrell Big Bro and treats him with respect due to their little ordeal. The guild master is surprised by his sudden change of attitude. Marika starts to get a bit jealous that he's trying to take Daryl's attention. All the while he wonders how the four kings are faring with their fight against the human heroes. Things move to the Demon King's army HQ, and one of the king's Zedians comes back injured after taking a huge L when an unknown spearing-wielding hero foiled their plans. She explains the situation to the other three and blames the lack of intel for her defeat. They fire the current assistant for his incompetence. After Daryl's departure, they have already been through five people. Doroy suggests that they rehire Dyrell because he was good at the job and even went above and beyond for them. She remembers all the personal things he did for her and starts to blush. On the other hand, his brother Bashabaza is raging red with anger that his name was brought up again and refuses to acknowledge that he made the wrong decision. We continue with Daryl preparing to leave for another gathering quest, but his colleague is all over around him seeking to get his attention which he finds a bit annoying, but he prefers this treatment to how Gashida was hostile in the past. After a long day questing, he returns in the evening, and as soon as he announces it, Marika darts out the front door and tackles him excited to welcome him back. Unlucky for Daryl, she has super strength, so she knocks him back along the ground for a few meters. As the dust settles so does her excitement when she realizes that she has knocked him out and has probably done some other damage as he bleeds from his nose and mouth. Daryl has noticed that her antics have been escalating each day but aside from that, he's enjoying his second life. He has started to realize that there is a hidden secret within the village. Later that night a bandaged up Daryl has a hot drink with the chief and guild master of the village. He asks him about the empty houses in the village and will warns him that it's going to be a long story before calling Marika to bring him the map, but he gets no response. Daryl decides to go check on her only to find her sulking because she lost control and hurt him earlier. At this rate she is sure that she will be the end of him. He assures her that he understands that it was an accident. His words remove her guilt, so she quickly goes to get the map. Envil spreads it and begins to explain the derelict houses as remnants of a time when the village was full of life. Beyond the village lies the most important site for humans, the Mithril Mine. Mithril is a metal with strange properties. Weapons made from this material boast unparalleled performance. Daryl mentally notes that even the demons treasure Mithril because it can be crafted into magical tools which can store mana. The chief continues that the material's value has led to a cycle of battles that have raged on for hundreds of years for the mine. The village of Lox was a stopover for the Mithril transport so naturally, it became a bustling in town. But when Envil was a child, the demons took the precious mine for themselves. There were attempts to retake it but the humans consistently failed so eventually gave up. With the mining trade non-existent, the village too started to suffer, so the chief feels like the village is destined to die slowly. Daryl later lies in bed thinking about the mine, he decides to go there soon since it is his former workplace. The day of his visit arrives as he overlooks the entrance of the mine from the top of a cliff. He hopes everyone is doing well before he slides down to get a closer look, he plans to persuade them to sell some of the mithril to him so he can put it on the black market which will enable him to generate a bit of profit for the village. Daryl just hopes that he can meet someone willing to negotiate, he's a bit nervous interacting with them since he's not part of the army anymore so he fears the possibility of getting captured. He sees a few empty wooden crates with holes in the side, so he uses one to disguise himself to infiltrate the place. As he proceeds, Daryl notices how easy it was to sneak in, if he arranged such lackluster security, his adopted brother Bashabaza would have burned him alive. After some time, he just realizes that there is no one around, so he removes his cover and strolls into the mine. The former assistant gets confident and begins to call out to see if anyone is there, he reaches a cliff and stops when he begins to hear noise coming towards him. An army of many hooded creatures with multicolored eyes start to appear from the darkness. Daryl looks at them with shock. They also look at him for a moment before he starts to call them by name. The minions get excited and call his name too as they jump all over him. One of them gets them all in line for a pat-pat, so he proceeds to pat them all one at a time till he's done. Daryl asks them for an update on the situation and is shocked to find out that they have been ordered to gather four times more mithril compared to the time he was in charge of the mine. He wonders who ordered such a thing, 
One alerts him that the command came from super high up. They all start trying to remember the name of the person who decreed it and proceed to make fun of Bashabaza's name as they try to figure it out. But from their attempt, Daryl figures out that it was his adopted brother. It is also revealed that the many creatures are called knockers as the former assistant worries about them being so disrespected. They begin to cry when they reminisce about the good days when Daryl was their boss. It was fun. He called them by their names and also took good care of them. They reveal that the last batch of soldiers was told to leave the mine to save cost, leaving them defenseless. Although they are no longer his subordinates, he still feels for them as they have diligently mined Mithril for the army. Their pity party is interrupted when the footsteps of the new soldiers can be heard, the knockers suspect they are there to check on the Mithril. Their closeness is hinted at when the magic light starts to illuminate the place. Daryl quickly hides just before they arrive at the foot of the cliff, the knockers line up ready to receive their new bosses. A soldier steps forwards with a crate of mithril and throws it on the ground. The new commander asks them what they are trying to communicate with this turnover of mithril. He alerts them that it doesn't meet the quota and accuses them of trying to sabotage him. One of the knockers steps forward to explain that the extra workload is too much for them and pleads with him to wait a bit longer. He shoots a warning blast that shuts up the spokesman. Daryl inspects the new commander and doesn't recognize him. He proceeds to berate and alert them that his orders are also the will of Bashabaza. Daryl feels like he's being a bit too rough with his subordinates. He turns to leave and orders them to get the required amount by the following day or they will have to face some consequences. One of the knockers can't take the mistreatment any longer so it springs into action and hits the new commander on the head with his shovel. This gets the others riled up in support. The new boss orders the soldiers to take out the rebels. The unit moves into action. Daryl gets worried because the knockers are workers not fighters, so they are going to lose. The unit begins their incantations to cast spells, but the adventurer throws a shovel at the hand of the soldiers, which interrupts it. He dashes across to save the two knockers that were in harm's way. Daryl orders the Demon King's soldiers to stand down as he asks them if they wish to murder non-combatants with magic. He stands his ground and alerts them that he's not retreating so he will dance with anyone who dares to step forwards. He has the bottom part of his face covered so that they will not recognize him, but he notices a strange smell and wonders if it's some kind of new magic. One of the knockers complains about their undies going missing and its description matches the cloth Daryl used to cover his face. A soldier points out to everyone that he's wearing them on his face, so he's labeled a degenerate. He wants to take it off, but he can't have his identity out there, but anywho, he releases his aura ready to fight. The commander jumps to the conclusion that he agitated the knockers to try and steal the mine from them. The soldiers move into battle formations, but Daryl is in a predicament because he doesn't want to hurt his old comrades. He decides to sheath his sword and tie it shut with the help of the knockers which turns it into a non-lethal weapon. He orders the creatures to hide somewhere safe as the soldiers begin their incantations. The adventurer rushes towards one of the men preparing to attack and knocks his helmet off. Some of the knockers decide to help and attack the guard who is about to finish casting his spell but instead of firing it, he kicks the creatures. It means that his words reach them, so he begins to address their pride in the Demon King's army and how their laws state that if a soldier kills one non-combatant it means they have committed murder. The new commander realizes that his speech is reaching them so he fires a spell at Daryl to stop his waffling. He then orders all of them to start chanting and threatens to burn those who disobey his order. With all kinds of elements being chanted at the same time, it is going to be almost impossible for Daryl to counter but he thinks fast and begins to dash across the area taking down the units that are casting the shorter spells. The new commander watches on amazed because that means he has every element's chant memorized. Daryl turns the water spell against them which takes out a large number of the soldiers. The commander instructs one of his men to use an enhancement spell to attack instead. He creates a giant rock hand, but Daryl takes it out with a single strike. He has now closed the distance between him and their leader. The commander panics and fires a spell, but Daryl blocks which also unsheathes his sword allowing him to pin the boss with the blade to his neck. The adventurer alerts him that it was always one versus one because his men were never going to kill the knockers. The commander begins to beg for mercy and reveals that he's not from the Demon King's army making him a non-combatant. He explains that he happened to meet Bashabaza at a ball and got along well as they chatted. He asked him to check on the mine for him. 
He confesses that his situation is pure nepotism as he drops his head in shame. Daryl wonders if his adopted brother hired someone just because they became friends because he fired him for being incompetent. The fake boss reminds Daryl that killing a non-combatant will hurt his pride as a knight. The adventurer stands but decides to cut the top of his hair as punishment for his actions and orders him to file his resignation when he gets back to HQ. He runs out of the mine quickly as his men watch on confused. Daryl informs them to leave too. With the threat averted, the first thing he does is remove the stinky item of clothing from his face. The knockers praise him for his strength, but they are worried about him because he just defeated the Demon King's army, he alerts them that he is human, so he has not betrayed his kind. The knockers decide to give their allegiance to Daryl making the mine his. That evening he makes his way back to the village and informs the chief that he recaptured the mine for the humans, Anvil spits his drink out in shock. Daryl pleads for him to take the knockers into their custody, and after some consideration he allows it. But the chief informs him that this would involve all of humanity so he must send this news to the Center Guild ASAP so that they can be involved with the next steps. When the news got out, many villages celebrated. With it under human control, now the knockers are employed as guides because of their vast knowledge of the mine. The village of Lox starts to become busy again due to the activity at the mine. Envil thanks Daryl for bringing the town back to life because he had already given up hope. Marika rushes over with lunch, but she trips. However, Daryl saves her from falling. She gets carried away that he called her by her first name, so she tackles him trying to hug him, but she knocks him out again. Looks like this guy really has a glass chin. The story continues at the Demon King's HQ where Bashabaza works in his study as his pet parrot serenades him with praises of his intelligence. They are interrupted when Zebians come to inform him about something, but she's distracted by the giant anomaly in the middle of the space. He explains that it is the place where their condensed magical weapons are made. Mithril is used as the main material because of its high magic absorption rate, so by continuously mixing and compressing the material he can create a super bomb that contains hundreds of times more magical power. He releases his fire magic to give more impact to what he's saying but this burns part of the room. Bashabaza feels like with this weapon he will cement himself as the greatest among the four kings of all time. Zebians points out that his new weapon will need a lot of mithril. He doesn't see that as a problem because he is in charge of the mine and has requested they produce quadruple their normal quota. She alerts him that it has been stolen from them by the humans. His confidence quickly turns to dread as he falls to the ground. Zebians tells him that the situation is much worse than he thinks because the Demon King himself has heard about his blunder and is not happy. The big boss summons him and weaves the need of Mithril into the conversation so that he can query him about the situation at the mine. The young looking lord activates a little bit of his power which begins to crush Bashabaza as he submits. He brings up the fact that he already warned him to stop making bombs and even decided to increase the need for Mithril in other areas as a soft way to deter him and not wound his pride but he didn't take the hints. The Demon King begins to insult his intelligence and marks his blunder as unprecedented ordering him to redeem himself instantly. At this point, Bashabaza's slick persona just crumbles as he sits on his backside scared. He tries to blame the knockers for the loss of the mine, but his boss only wants to hear his apology, which he reluctantly gives. The Demon King points out that if he had Daryl's help the mine wouldn't have been lost because he's competent with intelligence and a good heart. He's sure Daryl was the reason why Bashabaza's father, who was the previous Fire King, was able to serve him so well. A flashback starts to play of Daryl doing a good job and being liked, while Bashabaza hated him from the shadows. The thought of it makes him so angry that he grinds his teeth together. The boss dismisses him and orders him to reflect on this blunder at home. The Demon King opens his other eye as he wonders what they are to do now that Daryl is gone. Meanwhile, when the Fire King gets out, he recounts that his boss called him dumb twice which is frustrating enough, but what enrages him is that even the great Demon King acknowledged his adopted brother Daryl. His anger reaches a crescendo as he releases a giant fire blast that causes an explosion for all to see. During that interval, the village of Lox is booming because the mine is under human control now. Daryl and Marika sit under a tree watching the old residents and newcomers interact. She comments on how she has never seen the village filled with such warmth, and how she wishes that they can show it to their future children. There is a moment of silence as Daryl looks at her with confusion, but she promises to also cherish her husband which just increases his bewilderment. She stutters on her words as she tries to propose to him but some commotion in the town square interrupts them. 
Daryl apologizes and makes his way over to check out the situation but he has an idea of what she wanted to say. He arrives to see his guild colleague Gashida having an altercation with some other adventurers. He grabs him by the ear as the young lad explains that they were insulting the Lox Village Adventurers Guild. Thibbeton introduces himself as B-Rank who is the leader of the adventurer party sent from Campbell City. He's heard that there are only two adventurers in the village, so he assumes that Daryl is the other one he politely confirms as he shows his D-rank crest. Thibbeton begins to look down on them and doesn't believe the rumors that they took back the mind from the demons. So he asks them to disclose the magic trick they use to perform such a miracle because their ranks are too low to do it conventionally. Daryl just tells them that he got lucky, Thibbeton finds that story more believable. This only gets Gashida angry, and Daryl tries to hold him back. The B-rank turns his back to Daryl and Gashida alerting them that they will handle everything related to the mine, so the Locks adventurers can go back to doing their mundane chores. He also advises Daryl to keep Gashida on a leash as he describes him as a rude dog. His arrogance starts to annoy Daryl, so he pulls them up on an earlier incident where a high rank monster serpent was spotted in the Campbell City area but they failed to track and contain it. The monster came into the locks area, he alerts Fitbiton that it was Gashida who tracked it down, so he doesn't need a leash. This makes his colleague happy, as they leave, Gashida reveals that it was Daryl that defeated the big snake. This revelation shocks Fitbiton, the crowd start to mumble among themselves as they get excited, so he tries to downplay it. That doesn't work because the crowd starts to parade him around when someone speculates that he must have the power of an A rank. Fitbiton watches on looking very salty since it was his party that made that mistake during the operation. Later that night, Enbel throws a banquet at the lodge to celebrate the newfound success of the village. As Marika serves drinks, she overhears Gashida talking about the disrespect Fitbiton was saying to them earlier. This gets her angry, so she prepares to terminate him. Envil asks her to calm down as Daryl also tries to apprehend her. The old timer explains that he understands Fitbiton's actions a little because adventurers only have their ranks to prove themselves. Marika is having none of it and stabs her knife on the table out of frustration while also calling Daryl her husband as she rants on. The young lady gets embarrassed and rushes to the back. With the idea in his mind, he accidentally calls Envil his dad when he's about to address him. The village chief accepts and pleads with his new son-in-law to take care of his daughter, but Daryl makes them aware that it was a slip of the tongue. The following day, Mr. Best Fred, who is a member of the Center Guild, comes to Daryl looking for assistance. He went to talk to the knockers to strike an agreement, but they were wary of him. They refused to negotiate unless Daryl is involved. The adventurer explains that the little creatures were oppressed by their former demon master, so they are wary of strangers. Best Fred is curious to know why they trust him so much. Daryl just tells him that it's because he liberated them. He doesn't want anyone to know that he was in charge of the mine when he was in the Demon King's army, and that is how he got acquainted with them. The two make their way to the mine and with a seal of approval from Daryl, the knockers decide to now interact with the center guild. Best Fred thanks him for the help. He prepares to go home, but he bumps into Fitbiton and his party. One of his underlings greets Daryl, but the leader berates him for it. As they discuss, it is revealed that they are being employed to act as guards for the place. They are interrupted when a magic seal from the demons appears above them. It broadcasts a familiar voice that pleads with the knockers to come back to their side. Daryl activates his aura and quickly leaves to find the original location. He has realized that when he wears his aura, he can run faster. The adventurer dashes through the forest and eventually finds the unit broadcasting. The soldiers stop and prepare to attack, but the squad leader Rizit stops them. They explain that the enemy is an adventurer as he takes cover in the bushes. The magician casts a water spell as he orders his men to retreat for now. Rizit stops his spell before it hits his target and warns him to leave the area because they don't wish to fight. Daryl decides to reveal himself as soon as the mage releases it, he cancels the spell and gives him a big hug. He lets him know how worried he was and informs him that everything has gone to hell in the demon army since his departure. The ex-comrade and Daryl take a seat near a cliff to have a catch-up. Daryl discloses that he was human all along but tells him not to inform anyone. Rizit explains his point that the internal affairs of the army is not looking good, it is now that they realize how good Daryl was at communicating Bashabaza's reckless orders. He also acknowledges the great support he provided on the field, the chain of command is on the verge of collapse since his departure, and both the top brass and the underlings are frustrated. He is surprised to hear that Bashabaza is seen as dumb and has been suspended from the army because of his blunder. They have been ordered not to go near the mine, but Rizik got a personal order from the Demon King to try and resolve the tension between them and the knockers. He pleads for Daryl to come back to the army, but he refuses because he's human, 
but Rizet doesn't care as they are friends. The mage alerts him that among the four kings, Lady Droys wants him to return. She is always looking for him when she goes out. Daryl rejects the officer and explains that some human welcomed him in when he was at his lowest, so he would like to work for them for now. Rizet doesn't take the news well and tries to capture and return him by force, but Daryl easily cuts his way out of the water prison which shocks the mage. Daryl has a way to resolve the issue with the mine, he suggests that the demon army buy some mithril to meet their demand. Daryl sets up a meeting with Best Fred since he's the representative for the center guild, when the adventurer proposes the deal to sell some of the mithril to the demons he spits his drink out of his mouth in shock. He knows that there will be unnecessary bloodshed if the demons come back to take the mine, so he believes trade would be best. The humans will sell mithril to the demons four times the market price as a sign of their animosity. Rizet is happy with this arrangement, but Fitbiton who's on guard duty objects and tries to attack Rizet but Daryl blocks and lets him know that this problem will be solved through business. Since he's a D rank, Fitbiton tries to berate Daryl, but Best Fred rather puts Fitbiton in his place as giving political advice was not part of the services, he was hired to be a guard. Best Fred decides to take the deal as they hash out the details, the B-Rank watches on Salty again. The ex-colleagues debrief after the meeting, and Daryl reveals that the well-being of both humans and demons is important to him because of the kindness they have shown him. He looks on hoping that one day both species can live in harmony. The anime continues with Daryl making his way to the village's old foundry because Best Fred from the Central Guild has ordered him to revive the workshop to process the mithril. After some searching, he locates it but hears some commotion coming from the supposed empty foundry. When he gets closer, Fitbiton from the Campbell village comes out and he has already hijacked it with blacksmiths from his village. He gives a fake smile thanking Daryl for coming by but he and his team have got the foundry under control. Fitbiton points out that the people of Locke's village don't have the specialists to handle the assignments of blacksmiths. Daryl tries to alert him that Best Fred sent him, but he doesn't care and condescendingly tells him to go home and prepare dinner. Fitbiton uses his authority as a B-rank adventurer to shut the D-rank Daryl up. Left with no other option he makes his way back to Envil to alert him of the situation. The guild master points out that the Mithril mine is hugely beneficial to humans and the fact that Campbell Village lost that right to provide security around the mine must have irritated them. Daryl blames himself for this. Their conversation is interrupted by Marika rushing over and clinging to Daryl looking for help. She complains that an old man visiting the village has been troublesome, as he is not one to leave a damsel in distress. He rushes over to the scene. They arrive to meet the old-timer face down in some tomatoes, which Daryl first mistakes for a crime scene. He wakes up and alerts the girl that she gets too worked up as he munches on one of the fruits. The D-rank proceeds to berate the senior citizen for his actions. This puts Daryl on his radar, so he begins to roast him calling him a quack adventurer. This annoys Marika who doesn't joke around when it comes to her future husband. She lunges forward to attack the old-timer but Daryl holds her back, he alerts her that he was just going off his observation from his dull looking sword. He comments that the wobbling on the blade is evidence of oversharpening, only an off-brand wish level adventurer would trust his life with that thing. Marika informs the mature man that her hubby is already super strong with that sword, she begins to list all the feats that he has achieved, for example, his win over the giant snake. This catches the old timer's attention so he asks Daryl to show his hands to him, he explains that he can identify the attributes of one's aura just by touching his palms. A golden light emits from Daryl as he identifies that he is well suited to all fighting styles. This by itself gets him excited but he's also impressed by the size of his aura. He reveals himself to be Smith a well-known Mithril blacksmith. He heard that Mithril could be forged again at Locke's village so he came to set up shop. His apprentice arrives at the front of the village with a wagon full of his equipment. They bring the prospective blacksmith to the inn, but Marika admits that she doesn't know any blacksmiths that go by his name. She also comments on how generic the name Smith is and thinks that it's an alias. Daryl stops Envil as he makes his way up the stairs to ask him if he knows of a smith who is a Mithril blacksmith, but he's not so sure. The old timer quells all their doubts when he provides an official summons directly from the center guild. With that misunderstanding taken care of, he asks Daryl to take him to the foundry. The guy alerts him how adventurers from Campbell have taken it over. The old timer finds him spineless and asks them to still go so that he'll show him his negotiation techniques. When they get there, 
he latches onto Fitbitten and pleads with him to allow them to have access, his pressure becomes too much so the bee rank folds and gives them the corner of the foundry to use. Daryl watches on and is a little disturbed by his despicable negotiation technique. They make their way inside to stations of blacksmiths working on the mithril, the old man takes in the sight as he reminisces on the good old days. He sees a pile of rare material and rushes over to hug it, their attention is drawn to a blacksmith who yells in frustration because he messed up his forge. The senior smith scoffs and calls them amateurs, he takes some of the mithril to a furnace to show the proper way to handle the material. He orders Daryl to close the window to prevent light from entering. The master smith explains that the fire's temperature matters if it is too low or high, the material will turn into ashes. The others watch in the background as he shows the color at which the mithril should be removed from the forge. Daryl notices its bright color, Smith calls at the pressure point and each piece has its unique pressure point. He places it on the anvil and with one hit of his hammer, the mithril turns to a molten state, after some further processing he forges a blade. The master smith tosses it to Daryl to handle and he's amazed by how light the blade is. The old timer instructs him to channel his aura into the blade, and as he does so, he notices that the difference is significant. It is described as cotton wool absorbing water. Mithril weapons have a different level of aura penetration, so to demonstrate this they take it into the woods to have a few practice swings. Daryl cuts through a giant tree like a hot knife through butter and is amazed by the lack of resistance. They are interrupted when Fitbitten comes to apologize and pleads with Smith to teach them how to better handle mithril during forging. But he refuses because of the way he treated him earlier and slaps his backside for good measure. He leaves with Daryl which only annoys Fitbitten, the D-Rank turns around to find Mr. Mustache glaring at him. Seeing his blade performing so well has got Smith hyped and feeling refreshed but Daryl feels tired from all the swinging using his aura. When they get back into town, the old timer asks for his sword back which gets the adventurer a bit sad because he thought it would be given to him. Smith alerts him that that sword is not a good match for him. When Daryl reluctantly hands it over, the senior citizen discloses his dream of creating a weapon with mithril that doesn't belong to any family of swords, spears, or axes. He feels like after coming to Locke's village he has finally found what to forge, he asks Daryl to come along with him. The old timer already smuggled some extra mithril to use when no one was watching, he has already prepared a private workshop, they arrive at the inn and his disciples have already set everything up. Daryl looks at the ethanol furnace with confusion, this is a magical tool. Smith confesses to picking it up from the black market. The D-Rank points out that he can't use it without magic which he is aware, but he would be able to make his dream weapon if only he could get it working. Daryl remembers that his friend from the Demon King's army is still around so they ask him for a transmitter that will allow them to use the magical furnace. Kashida walks in on Daryl buttering Rizid up with some words of praise because he's looking for a favor, this makes Kashida jealous, but Marika tells him to stop moping around. Rizit is reluctant to help them but he hopes it's a one-off thing because he can't be complicit in humans' mass production of weapons since demons and humans are at odds at the moment. Smith assures him that he's not mass producing anything, he's making a one-of-a-kind weapon for Daryl to show appreciation for taking the mind back. Also, he possesses a special kind of aura that will enable him to use the weapon he's always been dreaming of forging. That was the reason he didn't want to give him that other weapon since it was a prototype. This one will be able to adjust to all four fighting styles. After hearing him out, Rizit activates the furnace, and Smith asks Daryl to get some drinks so that he can be sipping while working. On his way out, Fitbitten stops Daryl and pulls him to the side to discuss something with him. He proposes that their two villages work together to protect the mine and the surrounding area, but Locke's village will pay a fee for the service. Daryl refuses such a disrespectful offer which only annoys Fitbitten so he throws his glove at the D-Rank and asks him to pick it up. When Daryl narrates the events to Envil and everyone, the guild master alerts him that Fitbitten just officially challenged him to a duel. Envil suspects that he might want the mithril mine for himself, which is why he has challenged him, Marika worriedly comments that all Daryl has to do is win, but the guild master informs them that a D-Rank challenging against a B-Rank is just like a cat facing a lion. What's even scarier is the victor won't be sentenced even if he killed his opponent, because of this there are some who only duel to seek revenge. If the duel is dismissed that would mean an automatic defeat and the mine would fall into Fibiton's hands. After hearing everything, Daryl decides that he will participate in the duel, Smith steps up and is ready to forge his new weapon, he then sends him outside to teach him how to fight with a mithril weapon. Daryl is in the woods late at night training to be able to wield his new weapon, Marika interrupts with some tea for him to take a break. They sit together while he drinks it, she's worried about his upcoming battle but he's 
is happy that everyone has shown concern, which is also the reason why he wants to fight. She has decided to make tomorrow's dinner stew his favorite dish, so he should come back alive. Marika sets off to gather the ingredients for the dish. The following morning, some birds chill on one of the branches of knives Daryl has made with perfect knife throws. Meanwhile, in the town square, everyone gathers to watch the duel between the two. Envil is the one who is going to officiate the fight. Furbiton commends Daryl's bravery for not running away as he removes his weapons ready to fight. Daryl too unsheathes his mithril dagger which makes Fibiton laugh. He thought that the old timer would have made something bigger. Daryl ignores his jokes and wants to know what the rules of the duel are. They are to fight until either party surrenders or goes down. He will stop the duel if he sees immediate danger. The D-rank strengthens his resolve when thinking about the things he will lose if he fails. The guild master signals for them to begin. Fibiton tries to insult his weapon again but he's shut up when an attack shatters his shoulder armor. The B-rank gets annoyed and charges towards him but he realizes that Daryl's blade extends based on his stance so he retreats before coming back with a counter, but Daryl blocks. The D-rank extends his blade to sword length and cuts down Fibiton's shield. Smith discloses that the blade is special. By channeling one's aura, the wielder can change the shape of the blade. With Daryl's aura, he can change it to whatever he likes. He performs some swift cuts which destroys Fibiton's dagger. Anvil prepares to call the winner, but the B-rank stops him and has one of his subordinates throw over his new big sword made from Mithril. He promises to end Daryl for his many transgressions against him. The D-rank transforms his sword into a whip. Fibiton charges forward, but it is easily countered as his new weapon is completely shattered and is sent flying into a villager's house. Everyone struggles to stand with the gust of wind produced by the attack. Daryl is exhausted and almost collapses, but Marika holds him up. The following day, Best Fred comes to apologize to Daryl for Fibiton's actions and promises to strictly punish them. The D-Rank wants to decide their fate and opts to help them fix the villagers' home that they ruined during their fight. They all look at him shocked by such a lenient punishment. Best Fred is impressed with the way Daryl has handled himself in various scenarios so he offers him an invitation to join the center guild. Marika overhears everything and is a little sad that she could lose him. That night, Daryl takes a bath and thinks about the opportunities it could open up for him, like looking for his parents. He is surprised that Marika has joined him, she wants to discuss something with him. Things continue with Daryl and the sound of shock that Marika is in there with him because he mistook her for Gashida, which has led to an awkward moment. Thinking about the way she has behaved in the past, he expects that death awaits him. She calls his name which causes him to black out in fear, but he regains consciousness when she asks him about his invitation to join the center guild. She is certain that he's going to take the offer so wanted to talk to him and spend a bit more time with him before he left. She alerts him that she knew something like this was going to happen sooner or later because he's amazing. Daryl looks at her in shock, not sure if it's because of her kind words or the fact that she didn't send him to the afterlife. Regardless, he keeps his mouth shut as she continues that Locke's village has changed for the better since he came, he got the mithril mine back which boosted economic activity in the village which in turn brought people back, and everyone in the village seems happier in general. She also confesses that he is the first guy she has ever had feelings for, which leaves him more shocked than before. She ends her speech by letting him know that wherever he goes, everyone in the village will be cheering for him. She encourages him to do his best when he goes to the center guild. Daryl has noticed that she is always smiling for others while suppressing her true emotions just to protect them. He tells her that he's staying and is going to turn down the offer. Daryl feels he can't leave the village because when he got fired from his job, they were the ones who took him in and put him on the straight path. He stretches his hand while informing her that he loves the village that has done so much for him, plus he doesn't think he can live without Marcia's stew. She holds him and begins to cry tears of joy, so Mr. Chad takes the opportunity to plant one on her. He claims that he now has an extra reason to stay in the village. Meanwhile, at the Demon King's HQ Bashabaza makes his way to his dad's quarters where he meets him performing some powerful fire magic. The confused guy asks him what he's doing, the Grand Versa explains that it's rehabilitation for the wound he received from the hero. It will heal faster if he moves his body from time to time. He orders his son to come inside since dinner is ready. As they sit to eat his father asks him how he's doing as a member of the four demon kings. Bashabaza nervously answers that he's settling fine into his new role. The old timer is happy to hear that. He also wants to know if he has been listening to Daryl. He lies and says yes knowing that he has fired him. Granverza reminds his son that when he decided to retire, the people around were shocked not only because he was viewed as the strongest among the kings, but also, 
Bashabaz's youthfulness was a cause for concern when he was to succeed him. However, he was only considered because Daryl, the perfect assistant of the four demon kings, was remaining to serve. His father with a resting bitch face asks him if he remembers what he told him when he handed him the throne. Bashabaza recalls that he told him that his best encounter with life was with Daryl, so letting Bashabaza inherit that fortune was his inaugural gift. So Granverza asks his son how Daryl is doing at the moment and wants to know if he has been troubling his assistant. The young lad's heart skips a beat for a moment, but he stands up in attention to alert his father that all is well, and Daryl is doing a great job as their assistant. He then advises his father to take it easy and focus on his recovery. The old-timer laughs at his lies before flipping the table. Bashabaza screams in shock like an old lady as it hits him in the face. His father follows up with a powerful punch that sends him through the wall and into the balcony. Bashabaza lays there with his cheek instantly swollen from the punch. His dad then reveals that a lot of demons have appealed to him for days after asking that he talk to his son to forgive the sins of their family members after they have been fired as the assistant. Bashabaza's level of foolishness has surprised his father because he never expected him to let go of a precious treasure such as Daryl. Hearing those words makes Bashabaza grind his teeth in frustration. His father orders him to get Daryl back at once and after that he should beg for mercy because that's the only way he can continue being one of the four kings. Bashabaza's anger reaches a fever pitch as he rejects the idea of relying on Daryl to become a ruler. He unleashes his fire ability while telling his dad that he will rack up his achievements with his power. This is because he is the son of the demon known as the strongest. As he walks off his father wonders why they will not help each other. Granversa dissolves his power as he wonders where Daryl is and what he's doing. The following morning, Marika's mother is surprised that her daughter has overslept. Since it's out of character she decides to check on her, and she is surprised to see that her daughter has company. Marika later comes down and apologizes because she missed making breakfast. Daryl also arrives, but he slips and falls down the stairs exhausted. During breakfast, Envil notices his tiredness and suggests that he shouldn't spend long in the sauna next time. The two sigh in relief that he hasn't figured out anything yet, as the men talk, Marika's mother expresses her joy that her daughter has found a man. As the day goes on, Daryl is starting to feel a bit awkward around Envil because he's not aware of his and Marika's relationship. The old-timer looks at him and he thinks that Envil has found out their little secret. Turns out that he has got a pile of herb-gathering quests that he wanted him to complete. Daryl is also saved when Marika's mother comes and asks him to help her with the laundry. She thanks him as they move together. Now that she's alone with him, the mother hints to Daryl that she knows by playfully telling him to make sure that he gets along with Marika from now on. He immediately figures out that she knows and contemplates just telling her parents everything and potentially proposing to Marika. His thoughts are interrupted when Envil calls him while he holds an axe, so he thinks that he has found out about his entanglement with his daughter and has come to give him the axe. The old-timer leads into his office and begins to talk about how he and his wife are getting old and how he feels like it's time for the next generation to take over. From the way he's talking, Daryl feels like he has to confess first, but Envil gets his out first and expresses his wish to make Daryl his successor as the village chief. Daryl is surprised by this. Marika stands behind a bookshelf listening in on the conversation. Envil lists the reasons why he feels like he deserves it. Daryl is a bit intimidated by such a big role, but Envil assures him that he will be fine and advises that carrying a heavy load every day eventually bears fruit. Daryl takes those words and instantly applies them. He thinks about the moments he has shared with Marika and accepts the job but only has one request that he allows him to marry his daughter. He promises to make his daughter happy. This takes the village chief by surprise. She steps out from hiding with tears in her eyes as he turns to her to ask for her hand in marriage. Marika accepts his proposal and dashes toward him before football tackling Daryl through the doors. He only gets knocked out briefly and regains consciousness and springs up in the air with her. They have a moment professing their love for one another. She also tells her husband to be that they are expecting a baby which shocks him, so he married Marika and became the chief of Locke's village. One year has been since that day and the village has grown even bigger as the time passed. The Mithro manufacturing has been thriving even better than in its heyday. Daryl gives this update to Master Smith who passed away within that time. He places a drink on his grave and has one with him. The new chief makes his way home to Marika and his son Gran waiting for him as he takes his son. 
He comments on how much he looks like his mother. Daryl derived his name from Granverza, his adopted father, who looked after him till he matured. The family moment is interrupted when Gashida frantically runs in to inform the chief that they have a problem. Everyone pauses eating their donuts and watch him for a split second. They calm him down before he alerts them that the hero is coming, and the party is almost at the village. He turns to Guildmaster Envil to find out if the hero is as important as the people made him out to be. Envil looks at Gashida a little confused that he was panicking when he doesn't know who the hero is. Envil explains that it's a title that only one person can hold at a time after completing the harsh tests by the center guild. They'll have to defeat the great demon king as the strongest adventurer. Daryl recalls that from the demon's perspective, the hero is just a killer. He remembers seeing him once when he was the assistant. The hero was a bearded old man who came across a unit of demons and attacked them indiscriminately. Daryl wonders what he wants with the little village. He starts to get worried thinking that the hero has come to finish him because he was a former soldier of the demon king's army. Envil cuts all the long talk informing everyone that they must prepare their best hospitality before the party arrive. Since Daryl is the chief, he will be the one to welcome them upon their arrival, after a short while the villagers gather when word gets out that the hero is around. Daryl waits with his face half covered hoping he doesn't get recognized, he also holds his weapon ready to defend against a sudden attack. He is surprised to find out that the hero is a young blonde lady named Rady, the villagers gasp at her beauty and elegance. She thanks the chief for the formal greeting despite their sudden visit and introduces herself. She then presents Sesha and Satom as her party members. She asks Daryl what his issue is when she notices that he's looking at her oddly. He explains his surprise that the hero is a young lady. She reveals that after a deadly battle against the demons, her predecessor suffered great injuries and retired. Daryl feels like no one will recognize him, so he pulls down the neck warmer relieved that he's not getting killed anytime soon. Rady misinterprets his reaction as him being discriminatory, but he dismisses these accusations while he hides behind Gashida. The hero and her party walk through the village as Satom comments on the irony of a small countryside village holding the key to defeating the Demon King. Daryl overhears her comments and wonders what they mean by the key to defeating his former boss. Rady explains that she has come to have a custom mithril armor set made for her. She turns around to scold her subordinate for her rude comment. Daryl notices that the hero is using notes to help her structure more formal statements and finds it weird. They arrive at the inn where Marika gives them a further warm welcome and has prepared a banquet for them. She pleads with Daryl to hold Gran who is crying while she accommodates their important guests. The boy's cries suddenly stop when he notices Rady. The hero also has a soft spot for babies but tries to downplay it while demanding to hold the baby. Baby. Daryl is happy that his son has been carried by the hero, but things start going left when the kid starts concentrating on her melons. From his actions, Daryl is certain that Gran is his son. Things pick up with Sesha and Satom stretching on the upper balcony after a good night's sleep. They greet Chief Daryl good day, and he responds in kind as he arrives from an early morning fishing trip. He meets them inside where they go to wake up Lady. The trio knock on her room door, and she answers in a disheveled state holding her sword. The hero steps forward with it which gets too close to the chief's neck. Sesha notes that she is sleepwalking, her subordinate shakes her awake and she quickly shuts the door. Lady dresses up to look more presentable as she greets everyone feeling a little embarrassed. They proceed down for breakfast where she informs Daryl of her two objectives for coming to Locke's village. One of them is to attain mithril weapons and armor, so she was hoping that they see them right away. Enbel comes down to tell Daryl that it would be the first time that the current hero has seen the material, so he trusts the chief to do a good job with his tour. He takes them to the foundry which is the only forge in the world that can process mithril. Lady and her party are in awe of the grandeur of the workspace and how the mithril reacts when being smelted. Daryl explains that the material is different from others because it is incredibly permeable to aura. He gives Satom a sword to try it out and the sensation is like nothing she has ever felt. The hero gets excited looking at her subordinate's reaction to holding weapons made from the material, so she wants to know the process for made to order items. He calls Sakai who is Smith's number one disciple and current master of the forge since his passing. The chief alerts him of the opportunity opportunity to create a weapon for the great hero. He mistakes Sesha for the hero and gives him the most beautiful greeting, but they correct him that the hero is Lady. Without a pause, he quickly switches his attention to her and begins to use his master's technique for figuring out his client's aura type. Lady is a little taken aback by how invasive it is, but when he finishes, he reveals that her affinity is Slash 
which is very correct. With her stats taken, she moves on to her second objective which is the recruitment of a fourth member of the party they have been searching for the right fit for a long time to no avail. Kashida walks in and overhears the hero's worry and quickly volunteers to help. A couple of days later the archer organizes a hero's party selection tournament. Envil gets emotional as he officially opens it and the participants get hype feeding off his energy. The guild master is happy that a champion shall be born from his dear village. Lady is not as moved because she doesn't see the object of defeating the demon king as a game. Daryl apologizes on his people's behalf but Satom understands their excitement because their mission receives a lot of support from the center guild. Envil explains that the method of selection will be a head-to-head -head battle pitting the the hero's party against the 26 hopefuls, the participants stand there confused as Lady holds a wooden sword, Satom is armed with a pot lid and a ladle, while Sesha readies himself with a tree root. The hero explains that they are handicapping themselves before she orders them to attack, the participants oblige and rush toward them. After a short moment, all of them lay there defeated as they wince in pain on the floor. The three stand there a little disappointed that no one passed the test again, Daryl looks over in direction of the forest where Gashida's arrow glints for a moment before he fires it and it's made of mithril. Lady senses it and dodges just in time. The archer is perched on a tree and it is revealed that his weapon is made of the special material too. He fires a few more arrows at the hero who swiftly dodges as they proceed toward him. She comments on how impressive his power level is, but she thinks his accuracy is off. Unbeknownst to her, Kashida can control the arrows that he has already fired with his aura, so he directs his attack from behind, but Lady deflects them. This gives him time to charge an attack, but the hero senses this and begins to do the same. The size of her aura surprises everyone, Daryl anticipates the danger level of the attack and quickly interrupts by throwing an apple infused with his aura. Lady feels his power and stops her attack immediately. Satom rushes over and asks her if she was about to use that technique. Kashida comes back down crying that he failed. Daryl comforts him knowing that in the last year, Kashida has grown exponentially, he has jumped from D rank to B rank in that short period. He lets him know that he's the pride of the Lux village as their strongest adventurer. Lady interrupts and challenges him on that statement. She insists that they have a one-on-one -on -one battle. Daryl informs her that he has retired as an adventurer. She throws the apple back at him which cuts him off. The hero poses to attack as she reveals she can feel that Daryl possesses a power greater than Gashida. She dashes towards him forcing the chief to block with his mithril weapon. He quickly nullifies her wooden sword but she counters with a swing that Daryl dodges. The chief changes his blade to a whip to grab her which she escapes and tries to attack again and cuts the side of a cliff. Her subordinates notice that she is fighting seriously, Lady looks at Daryl happy that her suspicions were right about him. She responds appropriately by using her real sword and charges up to attack. The chief recognizes that form because her predecessor used it to destroy their forces when he was with the Demon King's army. Lady releases the attack. So Daryl decides to neutralize it by mimicking it and it works, the current hero stands there amazed by his strength. In the aftermath, Lady and her subordinates plead with Daryl to be the final member of their party as he's the one they have been searching for. They're a little shocked that he refused their offer. Daryl just tells them that he has work to do before turning away. That evening, the chief comes home after a long day and decides to spend some time with his son by feeding him his milk. Gran rejects taking the milk from the bottle and prefers it from the source. The feed session is interrupted when Lady and her party come again to persuade him to join them. He explains that he wants to watch his son grow up. The chief points their attention to some paintings on the wall and continues by saying that Gashida is the one that made it for them. He has promised Marika that they will make a new family portrait to commemorate each of their anniversaries, and he can't do that if he's away. Lady is interested to hear if there are any other reasons, so he lists other mundane tasks that he wants to complete around the village since he's the community leader. Daryl is also worried about Envil's back. The hero cuts him off livid that he considers those things more important than defeating the demon king. He's not sure if he's right or wrong, but he's okay as long as he can care of the things he can hold within his arms. The hero doesn't agree because she believes he can aspire to more. Satom can see she's getting heated so she suggests they leave. Lady promises that she will not give up on recruiting him. All the while, Marika comes with dinner which brings an end to the conversation. As he plays with his son, he recalls General Doroy from the Demon King's army telling him that they must protect their citizen smiles from invaders which moved him. He returns to the present as he admits that he could never turn his sword against the Demon King's army. The following day, Daryl sets off to do his rounds when Lady and Satom decide to stalk him inside wooden boxes. He greets a villager before proceeding. 
the stalker's past by which freaks out the residents. The hero wants to see for herself what he does in his day that is so much more important than defeating the Demon King. They follow him to the foundry where they observe as he helps calm Sakai who has had a mental breakdown by telling old stories about his deceased master. They then tail him to the Adventurer's Guild Hall where Daryl complains about seeing his father-in-law cleaning the floors by himself till his back gives way, the girls disguise themselves as they watch Daryl take over. As the day goes on, they see that they are grateful to the village chief for all the things he does for them, a family even gives him some freshly picked vegetables to show gratitude. By the time the sun sets, Daryl has finished his day's work and is now tending to some stray cats. Satom comments on how amazing and well-liked he is by his people. Lady looks down in guilt but their attention is drawn when Marika calls to her husband. He is surprised to see them out but after they exchange greetings, the family of three make their way home as the girls watch on. That night, Satom concludes that the scale which determines what is important varies for each individual because after watching Daryl, the work he does around the village looked as important as the hero's duty. Lady comments that it's because he believes it to be so. She later calls Daryl to meet her near a waterfall. The chief is a little confused about what she wants to discuss with him at such an odd time. She starts by confronting him about the ability he used to nullify her attack during their little match. Lady is curious to know where he acquired it from. He confesses that he only imitated what she did but she points out that his attack was different from hers. She explains that some possess aura throwing skills, but one among this rare group can perform the technique's leagues above the rest. That was the previous hero named Alancil, his technique even has a different name. She reveals that Daryl used that same skill. He's shocked because he didn't realize that it was such an impressive ability. From what he witnessed, as soon as the battle began, the previous hero would fire them off like it was nothing. She is surprised to hear that he used the ability without knowing what it was. She is conflicted because he doesn't seem to know the basics, but he is skilled enough to read the hero's sword work. This is proven when she randomly attacks him. She tells him that those with aura abilities must stand and fight. She attacks him again, but he evades and jumps to the other side. He informs her that the Demon King's army fight to drive away the hero who comes to kill the Demon King. This means that as long as the hero doesn't attack, there will be no fight. Lady doesn't agree with that narrative as she reveals that it was the demons that attacked and killed Ansel's family. She has been entrusted to fight so that one has to go through what he did. This is why she wants Daryl to lend his strength to her. He tells her that he once fought demon soldiers at the Mithril Mine and they didn't attack non-combatants and even sent a unit to negotiate with the knockers. He knows that the demons only want to protect their friends. Daryl reveals the reason he doesn't want anyone to do battle is that he has family on both sides. Lady comments on how kind he is and believes that it is only someone with a strong heart who can see the reality of the situation. To learn this trait she decides to appoint him as her teacher, other than the previous hero she doesn't think there is anyone stronger than Daryl. The chief accepts the position with the thought that he can keep her from fighting temporarily. Meanwhile at the Demon King's castle, General Doroy is sad that she can't find their former assistant. The other generals are too busy making their moves. Doroy wanted Zebians to use her wind magic to find Daryl, but she has heard nothing. During that interval at Locke's village, Daryl's friend from the Demon King's army visits him after tending to business. As they enter his house, General Zebians watches from the trees happy to have finally found their former assistant. Rizit pays his old friend a visit and finds the vibe of the village relaxing as he plays with Gran. He comments on how the kid looks like his father, but Chief Daryl is surprised by his hot take and thinks that he rather looks like his mother. He is taken aback by how good Rizit is with children. The demon changes the topic and asks about the hero's party whereabouts. Daryl reveals that they are in a neighboring town buying pajamas so they should be alright for a while. The chief notices that Rizit has been promoted to the special envoy position. It is revealed that he's on the same ranks as the four kings of the Demon King's army. He gives his gratitude to Daryl because it was thanks to the mithril deal that got him the job. That position wasn't needed before because of Daryl's service when he was in the army. They are interrupted when Zebians, a member of the four kings, finally makes her presence known when she suddenly appears. She is not happy that their conversation seems to be making it look like the top brass doesn't do their work. At this point, Gran is fast asleep in his baby basket and Rizit has been shown his true place as Zebians turns him into her stool. She comments how she finds it amusing seeing someone's terrified face. The special envoy feels embarrassed as he pleads for Daryl not to look at him in such a state. She shuts him up telling him that chairs don't talk and that he should have expected to be punished because Doroy has been desperately searching for Daryl and he knew his whereabouts and said nothing. Their little reunion is disrupted when Marika returns home and is surprised to see that they have a guest. 
she quickly drops her many barrels and goes to bring something for them to drink. Zebians is happy with how considerate his wife is. She continues by insulting Daryl's incompetence and average looks when Marika overhears everything. She doesn't joke around when it comes to her husband so she gets very annoyed. Daryl already knows her temperament and pleads that the Wind King is an important guest. But before he can finish his sentence, she power flicks the drink cork at Zebians which narrowly misses her head and smashes into the wall leaving a big hole. The Wind King quivers in fear as Marika shows her a new seat, Rizit is spared his humiliating punishment as he joins them on the table while they all take a drink. Marika stays behind her husband as he asks Zebians what brings her to their small village. She reveals that her main objective is the mithril, Rizit is in charge of their collection of the material, but he doesn't report the details to anyone. So she decided to conduct her search by tailing the special envoy, his old friend apologizes for the inconvenience caused but the chief is aware that this situation is not his fault. Zebians is a master of wind magic so there was no way he would have noticed her. She agrees with Daryl's assessment of her power and requests a piece of magic equipment made from mithril that would be worthy of her using it. The wind king also demands that they offer her all the mithril in their possession. The chief respectfully refuses the last request because he already has an outstanding deal with Rizit. She disrespectfully cuts him off by standing on the table with one foot and saying he needs to be taught some manners. A gust of aura pushes her hair back and when she looks up to see Marika giving her the death stare, the Wind King begins to quiver in fear for the second time. Daryl suggests that they go outside for some fresh air. The three take a stroll through the woods when Zebian suddenly stops and fires a wind blast at the chief, but he dodges it. She informs them that if words don't work then she will take what she wants by force. She complains about Marika's intimidation, Daryl still tries to come to a diplomatic solution, but Zebians will only do that after she has defeated him. The chief pleads with Rizit to stay out of it because he could lose his position if he gets into a fight with one of the four kings. He unsheathes his mithril blade, Zebian still thinks he's a demon so she scolds him for relying on a weapon. As she charges an attack, Daryl leaps towards her baiting her to unleash her spell with a feint before swiftly switching to a sting attack which puts an end to their exchange. She refuses to accept that defeat stating that she went easy on him, they have a couple more rounds and the result is still the same. Before Zebians begins the next round, she explains her theory that the mithril has been hidden somewhere in the village. So she decides to cast a giant wind spell to destroy the place so that she will take her time to find what she's looking for. Rizik comments that she plans to use a geostorm to finish the fight. Daryl extends his blade and counters by shooting his aura at the building storm. Everyone is surprised to see that the chief's attack starts to swallow up the storm consequently nullifying it. This caused Zebians to free fall from the sky so Daryl dashes and grabs her and their fall is cushioned by a water spell from Rizik. When the water washes away, the Wind King begins to cry because the chief accidentally got hold of one of her undergarments during the commotion. She promises to tell Marika when they head back to the village, Daryl draws up a contract and apology that will give Zebian some mithril, he shows her the price list but she complains that the prices are high. Rizit tries to oppose it but the chief tells him that he doesn't have a choice. She agrees to buy at that price, so they shake to make the transaction official, but Daryl pleads that she keeps all that she has discovered confidential. She sees his point and decides to keep her word. She's impressed with the properties of his mithril weapon and requests one just like it. He tells her that getting an exact copy will not be possible, but he sends her to the foundry where the introverted Sakai gives them an extrovert welcome. Daryl introduces Zebians and alerts the master smith that she wants something like his Hermes sword which combines the power of both magic and the forge. He's eager to work on such a project, Rizit realizes the time and decides to head back since it is getting close to his bedtime. This prompts the chief to remember that the hero's party will be back soon. With one of the four demon kings around, it will not end well, so he asks Sakai to take as long as possible to listen to her order. He quickly says goodbye to Rizit before rushing to meet the party who has just arrived. The current hero lady is smitten by the way he welcomes them. To stall them he asks Sesha to complete a quest for him and pleads with Satom to help his wife with whatever she needs to do. As for Lady, he asks her to practice her sword swing 100,000 times, in her confused state she begins immediately. The chief feels bad, but this should keep the two sides from meeting for a while. When he returns to the foundry, Zebians is wrapping up her business with Sakai and it looks like things are going swimmingly. Back with Lady, she completes the difficult task in good time and Daryl is impressed. 
She asks for permission to get cleaned up. He waits outside the bathhouse to prevent the two enemies from meeting. He is surprised to see Sakai inside the bath too. The guy apologizes for not being able to stall the Wind King long enough. She is already in the bathhouse when Lady joins her. The two have a lovely conversation not realizing who they're talking to yet. The hero recognizes Zebians when her towel falls from her head. Daryl rushes in when he overhears that the cat is out of the bag, but he grabs two hands full of melons by accident which gets him a double slap for his transgressions. Things fast forward to dinner where he sits there with both cheeks bruised. Marika serves him his food, but from her speech, it seems like our guy will have some explaining to do. It doesn't help that the two enemies are sitting next to each other. Zebians rudely asks Daryl about the person who is sitting next to her, so Lady stands up with Vim and proclaims her name and status as the hero. The two have fought in the past, but the Wind King tries to downplay it stating that she doesn't remember her. Lady wants to know why Daryl is so familiar with one of the four kings, the guy comes clean and reveals that he is a human that was raised among demons. This is a shock to everyone in the room part from Marika who found out this truth along with her family shortly after he proposed to her. With his disclosure, Daryl's refusal to join the hero's party makes sense. Regardless of his past, she doesn't feel like such a high-profile individual from the enemy's side should be casually sitting among them. Zebians ignores her statement as she asks for another serving of stew, but Lady wants all the smoke, so she snatches the Wind King's bowl and suggests she goes back to demon territory. Zebians asks Daryl to do something about the hero. The chief tries to de-escalate the situation, but Marika slams a full pot of stew on the table. She recommends that they should fight using their full powers as a means to better understand one another. The two agree to it and Daryl will stand witness to their duel. He makes them promise that no matter who wins they will not end each other. They agree and eat plenty of the stew to gain their strength. The two rush over to the foundry when they find out that Sakai has a more traditional bath. The following day, everyone gathers at the meeting place for the duel. Both fighters are already there along with Sakai who looks like he has been worn out. The ladies explain that they needed their respective advantages, so they made the smith produce mithril weapons for them throughout the night. They return him to Daryl who comforts him. The two begin right away and they showcase the enhancement the mithril weapons have made to their combat abilities. As they clash, Marika and Gran join them with an early lunch for the chief. She wants to know who is winning but Daryl judges that they are evenly matched at the moment. Lady uses her scabbard to also help her attack when her sword is blown away by a wind spell. She returns the favor by knocking Zebians to the canvas. The hero kicks her falling blade at the Wind King while she's on the ground. This amuses Zebians, so she gets back up and begins to charge a big attack. Lady accepts the challenge and prepares her signature move as a counter. They both fire but Satom's barrier can't hold off the environmental collateral caused by their attack. She is surprised to see Daryl erecting a barrier. The guy tells her that he just learned it by watching her do it. All the commotion wakes up Gran. The young buck looks up to see the two ladies fighting, so he gets excited and jumps toward them. The distress calls for Marika to catch the fighter's attention. As he bounces, a cliff nearby crumbles and falls towards him. Daryl dashes and grabs his son. Lady jumps in front to destroy the rock, but Zebians gets in front of her and destroys it. The family of three hold each other grateful an accident was averted. Gran is rather excited by it all. The two fighters decide to call an end to their duel after expressing themselves through their clash. They have some appreciation and understanding for one another. Daryl watches on as the once enemies plan to take a bath together. Marika points out that his dream to see humans and demons coexisting is one step closer. They take lunch to celebrate this new relationship. The story continues when Satom fanatically calls for Daryl who comes to the door wondering what the yelling is all about. He tells him that while on his quest, he encountered the most extraordinary individual. The chief's curiosity is quickly quenched when an older man quietly steps into view. Satom introduces him as the previous hero Alancil. Daryl stares at him with a bit of a worried look given his affiliation with the Demon King's army. Daryl finally zones back in when he hears Zebian's voice getting closer to the front door as she talks to him. The Demon General doesn't recognize the ex-hero and casually addresses him as Grandpa whilst telling him that his pecs are showing. This causes Daryl's heart to sink as he looks on with his mouth wide open expecting all hell to break loose. He expects Zebians to be sent back home in a body bag, so he begins to nervously apologize for her transgressions. He pulls her to the side to inform her that she just insulted the strongest hero in history. The chief adds more exposition by telling her that the scars on Alancel's chest are from tanking Grand Barza's most powerful attack, and he is regarded as the strongest demon in the army. She also starts to have a worried look on her face as she stares at the ex-hero, 
While they were having their talk, a Lancel buttoned up his shirt. Daryl continues to give the old timer more hype stating that he's a battle machine that sheds neither tears nor blood. The fact that a Lancel has not said a word makes the description hit harder. Some of the village kids nervously approach the old man so he turns to the children. Daryl expects him to harm them so he rushes over to prevent the worst but he is surprised that a Lancel is extremely friendly with the kids. More of them rush over to him in excitement so he begins to juggle them as they laugh out loud. In a short moment, the rest of the villagers line up to meet the former hero who is a legend. The line is so long that you'd think the next iPhone is being released. After that long meet and greet Daryl assumes that Alancel must be tired, so they offer him a hot drink plus some donuts. The old timer apologizes for interrupting his conversation with Zebians, but Daryl anxiously introduces her as an acquaintance. He's very quick to greet her which surprises her. The chief doesn't want them interacting much, so he offers the ex-hero a seat on the sofa. Zebians thinks that he's a kind man, but Daryl reminds her that he's only like that to humans and pleads with her to get away from the village when she gets the chance. He reminds her to be careful not to use magic until she reaches far from the area as a Lancel can sense magic. The demon general still doesn't understand the danger that she's in as she casually takes one of his donuts to eat. When they finally get a moment, Daryl apologizes for not introducing himself earlier, so he uses the opportunity to do so. He pleads to know what brings such a legend to a small village like Lux, Alancel reveals that he heard that his apprentice has been giving him a little trouble. Lady interrupts with an apology to her master for delaying her journey to vanquish the demon king. He informs her that there is no need for her to apologize and rather blames himself. Alancel believes that he was too hasty in sending her off on the mission. Now that his wounds have healed, he wants to teach her all the things that he forgot to include. This makes both Daryl and Lady happy for different reasons. The chief is relieved that it will give Zebians the time to escape. He immediately offers to show a Lancel their training grounds, but before they go the old man points to Gashida who is creepily watching them from outside. He informs the ex-hero that the pirated Zoro is their strongest hero. Everyone excitedly comes to watch the legendary Lancel give a lesson. Daryl feels that something is off and looks over to see Gashida staring at him, so he tells him to look at the previous hero because he will learn a lot. Before the lesson begins, he informs Lady that he will be instructing her through actual battle practice. While he casually signs some autographs, he tells her to attack whenever she's ready. Lady activates her aura and begins her assault, but Alancel dodges while attending to his signing which shocks everyone. He doesn't want to keep the children waiting for long, so he does a no-look two-finger catch of her blade before he tosses her to the ground putting an end to everything. As she struggles to get up, Daryl wonders if this is what he meant by actual battle because it just looks like he's toying with her. He is just surprised that the current hero is so helpless against the former, all the while Lady thanks him for the lesson. Alancel notices that her sword skills has significantly improved. She reveals that Daryl has been teaching her which shocks him. She carries on singing his praises stating that besides Alancel, he is the strongest person she has met. The chief is not edge because he doesn't want the old man to get provoked. His worst fears come true when Alancel unfolds his staff as he discloses that when someone becomes truly strong it is difficult to sense their true power. This is because the person tries their best to hide it, he requests that Daryl spars with him. Alancel wants to see the strength that makes his apprentice speak about the chief in such a poetic way. Daryl tries to play the retired adventurer card, but it doesn't work. The other villagers are a little worried about their chief facing such an opponent but fanboy Gashida defends his chief's strength as he cries. The chief stepped down to face him just before they clash, he senses Alancel's aura which terrifies him. Daryl postpones the fight by suggesting that they should have lunch first since they can't have a good fight with an empty stomach. The old man can't argue with that logic, so they head out under the shade to eat the food. Alancel tastes the shrimp tempura and loves it and even praises it like a judge on MasterChef. Moments like this make him happy because it has been so long since he has experienced it, Daryl remembers Lady telling him about the demons that killed his family. The chief thinks about his own and can't imagine the pain of it all. He feels bad for the ex-hero so he invites him for dinner and suggests that they take something light. All the while Zebians uses one of the old school viewing glasses to get a better look at the hero while she munches on a donut from the house. From her assessment, the general doesn't see him as scary at all. A sudden gust of wind tries to take some laundry away, so she uses her magic to leap up to grab it before it gets lost. A Lancel immediately senses the use of magic and launches his spear into the air. This guy brought out his inner James Bond because it acts as a homing missile and pins Zebians to the wall. As she hangs upside down, 
The ex-hero is already at her location and removes a knife to finish her off now that he knows she's a demon, but Daryl interferes, blocking his attack. A Lancel asks the chief to excuse himself while he deals with the demon and promises to have the match with him later. Daryl stands his ground stating that he will not accept the taking of anyone's life in the village no matter who they are. The aura of the ex-hero reminds him of their first encounter where Grand Barza faced him. Daryl pleads with a Lancel to hear him out but he snaps the wooden barrister to use as a weapon. The chief slashes at him, but he dodges leaping over him. He tries to apprehend the old man, but he deflects it and counters with an energy blast. Daryl blocks, but gets knocked back, so he grabs Zebians as he falls to move her out of harm's way. A Lancel throws the wood at them, but Daryl struggles to block it even with an earth enhanced guard. Lady and Gashida finally catch up, but the chief orders them to stay back. The ex-hero is surprised to meet someone like him who is blessed with all four attributes. He asks Daryl to re-enlist as an adventurer so that they can wreak havoc on the demons, but he turns down the offer. A Lancel decides to use his most powerful attack. Daryl counters with the same technique, but as they clash, the ex-hero's attack gets the upper hand and blows him back as he tries to block. As the smoke is about to clear, Lady stands and pleads for her master to stop, but one stare from him lets her know not to interfere. When the dust finally settles, Daryl's arms have taken some heavy damage as he gets held by Zebians and Gashida. A Lancel is interested to know why he protects demons and from his answer, he figures that the chief's goal is peace between the two races. Daryl brings up a Lancel's past and empathizes with his pain since he too has a wife and child. He also reveals that he was raised by demons which makes him have an affinity with them. This revelation shocks a Lancel. Meanwhile, at the Demon King's castle, Grand Barza comes to see the boss to plead with him to fire his son Bash Barza. The Demon King feels like Grand Barza wants this because Bash Barza fired his adopted brother from the army. Grand Barza denies this stating that he loves both his sons, but Bash Barza's blunders in the past year have been unforgivable. He thinks back to the day he met Daryl, it was just after a battle, the General of Water Bazetan pointed him to the baby's location stating that he's a weapon that can be used to neutralize the hero. Grand Barza immediately had a soft spot for the baby before taking him as a son and named him Daryl. Things come back to the present when the Demon King tells the previous Fire King that his adopted son is at Lux Village but warns him that he might not be able to bring him back because he has settled there rather well. There are reports that like the previous hero, Daryl has all four types of auras and does great deeds. This takes Grand Barza by surprise a little, but he remembers what the Water General said about him being a secret weapon against the hero. Meanwhile, at Lux Village, Alanso wants to hear more about his story, so Daryl enlightens him that Bazetan found him and entrusted him to Grand Barza who raised him. Alanso is the one who put an end to the Water General for the raid on his village, but his son's corpse was never returned to him, he was only left with his wife's body. Everything finally clicks for Alancel as he puts the information together, he gasps in amazement for a moment before asking Daryl how old he is. The chief tells him that he's 33 and wants to know why, Alancel quietly walks over and hugs him as he emotionally tells Daryl that he's his son. This guy is bringing out his inner Darth Vader vibes. Was anyone expecting the son to scream no in a dramatic way? This takes Daryl and everyone by surprise as he explains that 33 years ago his wife was finished by Bazetan but Alancel thought he ended his son too. After hearing the deals of Daryl's story plus the fact that the four aura attributes are passed from parent to child, this all proves that he is his son. Daryl is gobsmacked that he's the son of the previous hero. Their touching moment is ruined when Alancel senses Grand Barza in the forest. Alancel fires a blast at him, but Grand Barza easily blocks it and joins them. He comments on how much Daryl has grown stronger. Daryl is just taken aback as he is faced and reunited with his biological and adopted father at the same time. Things continue with Daryl standing there bruised and confused as his adopted father Grand Barza has made a surprise appearance. Faced with his nemesis, Alancel spins his staff and gets in a fighting pose ready to attack as he asks why he's around. The former Fire King wastes no time and also takes a fighting stance. Everyone watches on worry till Daryl dashes in between them pleading for them to wait, Alancel instructs him to move out of the way. The chief explains that right now he's still processing the bombshell that Alancel is his biological father but Grand Barza has raised him since childhood so he would like to talk to him. The former hero drops his guard which is accompanied by a sigh of relief from Daryl. His adopted father just found out about his relation to Alancel recently, but he has known for a while that Daryl was human. He started to suspect when he couldn't use magic by the age of five so he did his research which gave him the conclusion. Nevertheless, 
he still couldn't let him go and he's sorry for that. Daryl tells Grand Barza that not only did he raise him well, but he was always there to support him for example giving him his assistant job which gave him a sense of fulfillment. He never once felt unlucky for not having biological parents, which is something he could in no way repay even if he tried. Grand Barza interrupts telling him that he is the one that gave him something irreplaceable, Daryl was the reason he pushed through to get stronger. It is only when Daryl looks up to him that he can be called the strongest, the chief is his pride and treasure. Everyone gets shocked when he hugs his adopted son and Daryl returns the hug. Alansa listens to their exchange and drops his staff out of anger. He states that the time spent with Daryl that Grand Barza fondly speaks off was supposed to be his. He blames himself for giving him the chance to get stronger with the bonds he created with his son. In contrast, what made him stronger was anger and hatred. His aura starts to ooze off his body. Even though his son is still alive, he is angry when thinking about the time lost with him since he will never get it back. He asks them how he's supposed to live on with this hatred in his heart. Grand Barza steps forward informing Alancil that he doesn't need to and that he can lay it all out on him. The former Fire King acknowledges that the ex-Water King's extermination of Alancil's family was a hideous act and he's ready to take the responsibility for his colleague's wrongdoing. Before they begin, Grand Barza reveals his intention to bring Daryl back to the Demon King's army but from what he has seen, it might not be possible but wants him to live a happy life with his true father. Alancel picks his staff back up thinking that maybe his journey of revenge was meant to end with a final clash with Grand Barza. Both fathers release their aura in anticipation to fight as Daryl finds himself back at square one watching on the sidelines trying to figure out a way on how he's going to stop them. He's in a predicament because if he does, it would be disrespectful to Grand Barza's resolve to atone for what has transpired, he also has no right to stop Alancil from taking his revenge. As they dash toward each other, Marika jumps between them and tosses water which stops them in their tracks. It falls as little droplets which cools them off, she pleads for them to leave the beef. She doesn't know the circumstances, but she wouldn't want them to show their grandson the ugliness of fighting out of hatred. The two old timers watch on as she shows them Gran, Daryl smiles amazed that the two greatest heroes in history are his son's granddads. Thanks to Marika's action, it has shown the chief how best to solve this problem. He first addresses Grand Barza pleading for him to live if he wants him to be happy. He then turns to Alancil acknowledging that his time as a parent may not return but as a grandfather, he can spend some time with Gran. This suggestion lights up his face as the solution to mellow his hatred. He thinks back to his time holding a young Daryl as he holds his grandson. The chief thanks his wife for showing him away and informs her that he's happy that he married her. This gets her shy as she uses her monstrous strength to hug him which almost breaks his back. Meanwhile, at the Demon King's HQ, Grand Barza's biological son Bashabaza hums as he walks up the stairs to his self throne advance party for becoming the greatest of the four generals. He opens the door to find the place empty and immediately asks the front of the house where everyone is and contemplates if they are late. The attendant respectfully tells him that no one is coming as they have all declined his invitation. Bashabaza and his bird look at him confused. The front of the house continues explaining that his father has gone to the Demon King and has petitioned for his dismissal. This shocks and confuses Bashabaza, but the attendant just tells him bluntly that it's because of him that the Demon King's army is falling apart. His blunder of losing the Mithril Mine to the humans was bad, but everyone from the citizens to the demi-humans has lost faith in the army. It will not be an easy feat to restore the trust that has been broken. Bashabaza explains that he has finally found and perfected a secret technique for defeating the hero. The front of the house points out that it's too late as the emptiness of the hall should be enough evidence. After being asked, he tells Bashabaza that if Daryl was around, things might have been able to change. He sits and orders a drink, but one of the servers nervously refuses because he has not been paying his tab, and since it's looking like he might be getting kicked out of the four generals, they are even more reluctant to increase the tab. The server state the reason he was allowed a tab like that was because Daryl was managing it for him. Hearing his name again gets Bashabaza raging so he releases a powerful blast that knocks the server back. He steps out of the flames annoyed that they are not putting some respect on his name and promises to make them all regret as he showcases a glimpse of his new power. He has every intention to end his adopted brother for the constant outshadowing. Back at Locke's village, the two old-timers have done a 180 and are playing with their grandson, Daryl smiles as Alancel compliments Gran on some of his physical traits and how he's overflowing with intelligence just like his dad when he was little. He even prospects that he will be a hero in the future. He gets a little salty that the little baby of culture is sitting with Gran Barza, 
the former Fire King senses things and teases him further by hinting that Gran's name is inspired by his. A Lancel wants them to change the child's name to include his too but in the process, Daryl notices that it would put him in Gran Barza's lineage. The young one starts crying so the former hero uses it as a chance to take shots at Gran Barza and tries to stop the crying by dangling his staff in front of the kid but it doesn't work. As Marika takes her son to change his diaper, Daryl receives a call from Rizit on a magical device. We would call that a phone. Gran wants to talk to him when he hears that it's Rizit on the phone. When given the magical device, the baby complains to him that he's being attacked by a bearded man. Gran Barza takes the phone and Rizit threatens to deal with him if he messes with Gran. Gran Barza reveals himself to Rizit as the bearded man and promises to deal with him when he gets back for having a great relationship with his grandson. Before a frightened Rizit can respond, Gran Barza crushes the phone. Marika lightens up the mood when she announces that dinner is ready. All the young folks sit at one table while the senior citizens sit on their own. Envil joins them but feels out of place sitting with such legends. Daryl comes over to pour some drinks for them. They shout cheers as they hit their cups together, but Envil's cup smashes since he's a normal guy among monsters. The guy shivers in fear as the two drink. After a short while, they act merry as they hold each other which leads to a chilled moment as Alancel formally thanks Gran Barza for raising Daryl into a fine young man. He offers his hands which shocks the demon, but he shakes it as they both smile. Daryl watches unhappy to see them interacting in such a positive manner. He later brings the dishes from the feast and offers to help with the cleaning, but his wife insists that she will take care of it. She sees that he's still in pain from his injuries so she takes him upstairs to rewrap it and comments that she would have punched a Lancel for causing her man so much pain but he's her father-in-law. Marika comments on his ability to solve the problem with his kindness and how much she loves it before heading back down to clean up. She left some special dessert for him and pleads that he eats it before taking his medicine. Daryl struggles to eat the jelly-like sweet and drops it, but Zebians catches it, she misunderstood the chief's speech when fighting a Lancel as him confessing his love for her. This confuses the guy as she leaves saying she will think about her response and get back to him. While out alone, the Wind King laughs at the fact that teasing Daryl is so fun. The following day, Lady pleads with her master to train her, Daryl is surprised that she is still going ahead with a quest to defeat the Demon King after everything that has transpired. She feels like defeating the Demon King is the hero's duty. Alancel explains that this quest to defeat the Demon King has a political agenda attached to it. Apart from the official story that it will bring in an age of peace and abundance, the Demon King has great wisdom and power so the Center Guild feels it can be stolen if he's defeated. The master plan is to have humanity evolve into a greater race. The use of magic by demons is something that is bestowed upon the race by the monarch, so humans might also be able to use it after his defeat. Gran Barza confirms that such a legend does exist and adds that the same demon has been sitting on the throne all this time. People speculate that he might be unaging and immortal. This fact makes Lady think twice. Alancel tells her that she is free to give up on challenging him since it's a battle stepped in by human greed. The other battles will continue even if she quits so she decides to keep fighting and will make her final decision once she has seen everything with her own eyes. Daryl is happy that at least she wants to come to her answers instead of believing the propaganda. Their conversation is interrupted by a loud knock from Mishita. Daryl is surprised to see Fitbiton at his doorstep in such a panicked state. He informs them that the Mithril Mine is under attack by a monster, so he pleads for immediate reinforcements. The chief orders Gashida to assemble a squad and follow after them. He begs for Zebians to use her wind powers to transport them to the mine. Marika worriedly watches on as they all set off. After a short while, they arrive at the mine. But Zebians can't fly any closer because of the heat caused by the giant dragon that is spitting fire around the area, and when I say spitting fire I don't mean lyrics. They have never seen a monster like that before, so Gran Barza suggests that it will be better to land because it is dangerous for them to carry on approaching in this way. The other guards report that there have been no casualties so far but the knockers are still inside, Daryl decides to go check on his little friends. While he does that, Gran Barza puts forward that they should try and contain that monster. The story continues when Daryl dashes forwards into the mine to check on the knockers. After a short while, he is joined by his father who is sure that the other group facing the dragon will be fine without him. He pleads with Daryl to allow him to support him since they have only just reunited. The chief is moved by his words and is grateful. All the while, the dragon continues to breathe fire all over the place as Gran Barza watches on with a theory that he refuses to believe. His thoughts are interrupted by Satom who wonders how they are supposed to subdue a creature of that caliber. Lady answers that they are not going to restrain it, instead they are going to knock it to the ground. 
she draws her sword and orders her party to charge forward as she leads the way. She asks Zebians to give them some lift with her wind magic. She creates platforms for them to stand on which thrusts them upwards. Sesha uses the momentum to launch a powerful sting attack with his spear, but it is as effective as one using a wooden toothpick to punch a hole through steel. He looks over to the current hero who uses her signature attack, but it doesn't do anything either. She free falls like a sitting duck as the creature counters with a claw attack, but the Wind King uses her magic to move her out of harm's way. They land on a nearby wall safely, but as the smoke parts, they are confronted with the monster facing them with its mouth open as it releases a powerful fire attack at them. Satom tries to block with her shield, but the fire is just on a different level, so it begins to incinerate her armor, leaving her in a state. Luckily for them, Fire Master Grand Barza is around so he quickly uses a magic spell that absorbs the fire before it can do them any significant damage. Grand Barza reveals that what they are facing is the magical flame beast Salamandra. During that interval, Daryl and his dad reach the main entrance to the mine, but they are not able to proceed forward because of the fallen rubble, but the knockers calm down a little when they hear Daryl's voice. Just as Alancel prepares to blast a way through, the Salamandra rushes over to their location. They both agree that something must be done about the monster that stands in their way first, so the two activate their aura and take the high ground as they dash toward their prey. The father and son simultaneously release an aura blast creating twin dragons that hit the monster. Everyone watches in awe as the creature comes crashing down. Daryl lands in front of the others and is faced with the salamandra. As it rises again, Satom calls to him to keep his distance because being so close to the dragon is dangerous. It roars in his face, but he still stands his ground and locks eyes with the salamandra while stretching his hand towards it. It calms down bringing its nose closer and has a moment with him before falling back and leaving, Daryl stands there with his hands still out. With the threat gone, the others rush over to the chief. Zebians proclaims themselves to be the winners because the monster has retreated. Lady notes that she felt hatred coming from it, however, Daryl didn't sense that, but he instead got a nostalgic feeling from it. Grand Barza tells the chief that he is returning to the Demon King's castle. He drags Zebians ordering her to give him a lift because he used up his magical energy. As they watch them leave, the current hero wonders what prompted the sudden departure. A Lancel brings their attention back to rescuing the knockers. Daryl joins him and they finally remove the rubble. The little creatures overwhelm him with appreciation for saving them. Meanwhile, the others tend to some of the guards and other human workers that have been injured. The chief looks at the devastation and is disappointed in himself that this happened on his watch. A Lancel sees the self-criticism on his face and advise his son not to think that he has to be able to handle everything himself. Even those who stand at the top must borrow the strength of others when necessary, Daryl heeds his father's words. Kashida comes with relief supplies, but their attention is drawn when someone informs them that one of the guild workers is still missing. They all took shelter in the mine together when the attack came, one of the knockers volunteers to go search with Daryl. During that interval, Grand Barza heads back to their HQ and immediately marches to his biological son Bashabaza. The young guy sits there casually drinking tea as his father comes to confront him. After seeing his magic eye, Grand Barza punches the wall when he realizes that his son entered the Room of Secrets. This is the first time Zebians has heard of such a place. Bashabaza explains that the chamber is hidden inside the castle. Since ancient times, every hex ever developed has been stored there. Hexes are significantly more powerful than any other magic known to the world, and they are accordingly riskier. Their ancestors feared them so they sealed the hexes away. Among those hexes is a technique for making a magical beast serve the caster. Grand Barza sends a trace of his son's will from the salamandra at the mine. The father is angry at himself that he didn't notice sooner. The year that he spent traveling was to find magical beasts, Bashabaza wants to leave because he has an important errand he has to run. His father brings up Daryl which makes him very mad as he shouts at his old man. He reveals that he knows that Grand Barza was with the hero and the other humans. The guy saw it through the eyes of the magical flame beast. His father identifies that technique as the hex of spirit synchronization magic and notes that it weakens the caster's body and eats away at the mind. Soon it will cause him not to be able to identify the boundaries between himself and others. Grand Barza insults his son for going down such a dangerous path. It is a stain on the legacy of the four generals that he would turn to hexes while being a member. This is reckless because it exposes the community to untold dangers. Grand Barza deems him not worthy of being one of the four generals, so he launches a powerful fire attack at his son, 
but Bashabaza calls his salamandra which blocks it with ease. He is happy that the current and previous heroes are in the same place because it will be a huge achievement if he defeats them both. His father shouts for him to stop as he leaves on top of his magical beast towards the village. Zebians tries to warn him that the previous hero is quite formidable but her words fall on deaf ears. Grand Barza pleads for his son not to commit more sins than he already has. All the while, Daryl and his knocker companions make their way through the mine looking for the missing person. As they proceed, the mine starts to shake suddenly. The chief suggests that they evacuate, but before he can turn to run, a voice tells him to stop. The quaking also subsides. He turns around and is met with a talking rock head. It asks the knocker if they know a man named Daryl. The chief pauses in shock that the creature knows his name, so he quickly grabs the knockers and tries to make a run for the exit. He tells the creature that it has the wrong person, but it blocks the path before he can escape. The rockhead names Daryl as the reason why his old friend Salamandra burned his body. When the creature asks again, he confesses to being the one he's looking for. Daryl apologizes, but he's a bit confused as to how it's his fault. The rockherd explains that the Salamandra reflects the rage of the caster. It asks Daryl to bring forth a piece of its body known to human as Mithril. He is impressed with the quality of the chief's blade when he brings it out and can tell that he's strong. So it rewards him by releasing some of the restrictions present in the structure of his blade which upgrades it immensely. The creature formally introduces itself as the magical earth beast Gigantomachia. The earth beast warns him that Lux village will become a battlefield before disappearing into the mountain walls. They also find the missing person but Daryl ponders on the warning. He gets a call from Grand Barza who tells him that Bashabaza is controlling Salamandra. The sense of nostalgia that he felt was Bashabaza. He warns him about the hexes and how his stepbrother plans to use this power to bring calamity by ending the heroes and anyone associated with them. Daryl acknowledges that he and Lux Village may be his main targets too. His suspicions are right because Bashabaza heard the humans call him chief through his creature. Given Lux's village's proximity to the mine, he figures that it must be the place he governs. He plans to burn everything precious to him. Meanwhile, Daryl gathers all the villagers to evacuate which will be led by Envil. He turns to Marika and thanks her for the gauntlet that she made for him. She gives him their wedding ring to wear as a protective charm. She pushes him off hoping that he will come back safely. His son Grand seconds his mother's statement. Daryl and his support team wait at the entrance of the village. After a short while, Bashabaza descends on top of his magical beast and casually greets Daryl. He feels like the place is too dark so he casts a high level fire spell that creates a miniature sun. This is so he can get a good look at his stepbrother. Alancil recognizes the spell as Grand Barza's annihilation magic. He wonders if that means that Bashabaza is on the same level as his father who is considered the strongest demon. Daryl stretches his hand to stop Alancil from engaging the enemy. He pleads with Bashabaza to calm down so that they can talk but he is more interested in finding out if Daryl is married based on the ring on his finger. He sarcastically congratulates him and finds the timing perfect. He explains that the more burdens one carries when things go bad, the more severe the pain. He informs Daryl that he will end his wife before burning his village to the ground. The chief thinks back to Grand Barza asking him to look out for his son when he vacated his position. He apologizes in his heart to Grand Barza because he is about to open up a can of beatings for Bashabaza. Daryl unsheathes his blade and turns it into a whip as he declares that he will stop Bashabaza. The guy orders Salamandra to wipe everything connected to Daryl away. The chief uses his whip to prevent the creature from gaining altitude. The Fire King is confident that he can't hold on for long, but Zebians catches up quickly and uses her wind magic to fortify Daryl's hold. This allows them to drag the creature to the ground. Bashabaza dismounted before the fall so he fires a blast at Daryl who counters. He pleads to everyone to deal with the creature while he takes on his stepbrother. The chief pushes him far away from the village so that they can face off. He apologizes if he's upset about the way the humans took over the mithril mine. He proposes that they enter trade talks that will favor both sides. But although things turn out like this by chance, Bashabaza is partly to blame for firing him. Daryl is surprised to know it's not because of the mind that he resents him, but he just doesn't like him in general. Bashabaza has a dream to end the human demon war by defeating everyone and standing at the top as the strongest. Daryl promises to stop him. The two of them clash as the chief cut and blocks the Fire King's attacks. He gets the slight upper hand and knocks Daryl into a cliff face. Bashabaza is surprised to see Daryl acknowledging his strength, but he's disgusted by his kindness so he shoots a point-blank fire attack at the chief. 
Daryl thinks about everyone in the village and counters with his powerful aura blast that overwhelms Bashabaza. Daryl calls to him worried that he might have hurt him. The Fire King is angry that he lost the exchange. Daryl watches on shocked as Bashabaza unleashes the full power of the hexes which transforms him into a monster. Things continue with Satom placing a five-layer barrier over the Salamandra to prevent it from attacking from the sky. Kashida unleashes an aura-charged arrow at the monster and follows up with more. They join together creating the link for a bolt of lightning after effect. Alansa watches on stating that it's strange because he's retired and is standing on the battlefield side by side with his enemy, nevertheless for the first time he can fight with a hero's heart. Grand Barza also finds it interesting that a team of humans and demons working together is what is going to stop the magical beast. Alansa jumps forward and activates his aura, and for the first time, it is golden instead of his usual red, this shows that his heart is beginning to heal. He flash steps and lands a devastating uppercut against the Salamandra. Grand Barza immediately follows up with a fire spell so powerful that it causes damage to the fire-based creature. Everyone is amazed that his attack disabled the beast as the fire magic powering it disappears. During that interval, Dario looks at Bashabaza in shock at his transformation wondering if that is the effect of the hex. The demon turns to him with a sinister expression and attacks with a powerful strike but the chief blocks. He takes the momentum and bounces off the wall. But Bashabaza meets him in the air and begins to call him an incompetent person who can't use magic. The demon kicks a fire spell at him, but Daryl slices it with ease. However, the chief has to use his guard because the attack is swiftly followed by another. Bashabaza finds it infuriating the way Daryl smiles like nothing is bothering him, but he's happy that he finally has the opportunity to get rid of him. Daryl tells him that he has nothing, but Bashabaza only gets angry as he feels like that is what the ones who have everything say. Daryl pleads for his adopted bro to stop the fight so that they can do some talk no jutsu, but the demon is not interested. He rather begins to cast a powerful fire spell as he proclaims to be the strongest of all the generals. Daryl can see that it is a dangerous spell so he unleashes the power of his newly acquired blade, it absorbs the chief's aura more efficiently to an extent that others can see the golden light beaming into the sky from the power that has been released. Daryl takes that energy and performs a kendo-style downward swing at Bashabaza who has a worried look on his face. The impact causes a giant explosion which worries everyone a little. Daryl pants heavily after expending so much power. As the dust settles, he has a look of horror on his face as Bashabaza transformed into the next stage of the Hex to protect himself from that attack. The chief comments on how he looks like a magical beast as his left eye emits a flame. The power increase in his new form is very significant as he instantly closes the distance between himself and Daryl. The chief is not able to react as the demon grabs him by the neck before slamming him to the ground and throwing him into a nearby cliff. He tries to follow up with another attack, but Daryl manages to block him. As they stare each other down, the chief pleads with Bashabaza not to make his father grieve more than he already has. This only annoys the demon further as he asks him not to speak of his father. In that moment of high emotion, Daryl is shown visions of a toddler Bashabaza admiring his dad as the people give him a hero's welcome for his achievement. The child informs his dad that when he grows up, he wants to be the strongest of the four generals just like his father, but his mother had a more reserved response to the cheering crowds. Daryl watches on shock that he's witnessing Bashabaza's memories. A few years later, young Bashabaza waits for his dad surrounded by all his school achievements, but he was heard to see that his dad brought Daryl to the house and told him that the newcomer was his older brother. Bashabaza figured out that all the time he was waiting for his dad, Daryl was at his side. At a later date, he informs his mother that he wants to join the Demon King's army, but she disapproves stating that he will enroll in the Magic Academy instead. He asks his mother that if he places first in his class, he would like to ask her something. Young Bashabaza worked hard and graduated first, but his mom with a dismal face tells him that he too is going to leave her side when he was recommended to apply for the general position in the army. With that he felt like he didn't have a place to belong as his mother was not happy and his father had Daryl, so when Daryl was presented as an aide for him when he became one of the four generals, Bashabaza was livid, which is why he sacked him. The flashback ends with the demon stating that he has to win or else his life is worth nothing. After seeing everything, Daryl finally understands that Bashabaza felt alone all this while. The chief is disappointed in himself that he didn't realize it sooner. The transformed demon orders him to be quiet hinting that he can hear his internal monologue, Bashabaza doesn't want his pity. Daryl figures that it must be the cause of the spirit synchronization magic, so he attacks while trying to reason with him. At this point, the demon is 
is skeptical that the chief understands how he feels, so Daryl reveals that he was separated from his biological father. Bashabaza begins to see visions of Daryl's past. He struggled internally because he knew he was not truly part of the family and his inability to use magic only made things worse. So the least he could do was not to cause any problems for Grand Barza. Smiling became the best way for him to hide the pain. This all changed when he met Bashabaza and became an older brother and one of Grand Barza's sons. In his mind these bonds were unbreakable. Daryl therefore pleads with his younger brother not to say that his life is worthless. He grabs his hand and promises to support him this time around until he feels safe. These words resonate with Bashabaza causing his mask to crack, he regrets being stubborn and accepting Daryl as his older brother and wonders if things would have been better if he had taken his hand that day. The power of the hex begins to fade as he returns to his old form, Daryl stretches his hand again with a smile on his face to make it known that it's not too late. Bashabaza decides to take the right option this time and reaches out to hold his hand, but the hex within him throbs. The immense pain causes him to pause, Daryl calls to him with a worried expression. Salamandra begins to revive again using Bashabaza's magic, the team dealing with the magical beasts start to get confused, and Grand Barza suspects that the hex is broken. The Salamandra lets out a roar which is accompanied by a heat wave that Satom struggles to block, the power coming out of the magical beast scares even the old hero. Bashabaza's reaction confirms that the hex is broken, so he quickly rushes to the location of the beast and merges with it to try and get it back under control. His dad notices that he's using a body fusion hex and calls for him to stop as it's too dangerous, Bashabaza manages to gain control and makes the monster fly away. Grand Barza explains that he can only manipulate the creature for a short while because it begins to rampage while also absorbing him in the process. Daryl arrives at the location soon after, Bashabaza has already surrendered to his fate and is ready to atone for his sins. He is happy that at least he got to overcome his problems with Daryl. He suddenly finds himself out of Salamandra's bondage which shocks him. The demon looks down to see that his father has cast a hex that also affects his left eye. Zebians uses her wind magic to launch Daryl into the air. He comes back down as he fires his signature attack which completely severs the link between his younger brother and Salamandra, consequently destroying the creature in the process. As father and son hug, they get a vision of how things were when Bashabaza was younger. Zebians holds them up as they have their moment before bringing everyone down safely. All the while, Marika returns to the house with her mother and father as she prepares the feast, her father feels like she's getting a bit too excited given the spread of food she has presented. She tells him that it's fine as she wants to treat her husband who has worked so hard to protect the village. She gets a feeling that her love is approaching so she quickly dashes to the entrance. Marika busts through the door and dashes toward her husband. The lady's acceleration always amazes him as he contemplates blocking her powerful hug using a guard, but he just decides to take the blow. But this time around, she gives him an embrace with her natural pillows which makes everyone shy a little. Meanwhile, the demon king summons Bashabaza so that he can explain his actions, the monarch calmly berates him before he apologizes and expresses his willingness to accept whatever punishment that is deemed necessary. The demon lord opens up a portal to hell underneath him, he explains that the inhabitants are previous members of the four generals who have committed crimes just like him. They have been suffering and screaming in that state for hundreds of years. The boss decides to give him two options, to take a second chance as one of the four generals and rectify some of his wrongs, or to fall into hell. The demon king hints that he should take the former since he's still young, but Bashabaza interrupts. He thanks the monarch for his mercy but chooses hell, this surprises the boss so he wants to know why. Bashabaza explains that what he has done is unforgivable so he feels like he needs to face the consequences so that lessons can be learned. One of the demons grabs his leg but the king opens his right eye and dispels the gateway. The king was planning to let him be happy that he was offered a second chance before dropping him inside hell. But since he chose the punishment, it ruined his fun, so he decides to kick him out of the army just like he did to Daryl. He walks out to his father and bird companion waiting for him, the two make their way to Locke's village to officially visit Daryl and the family. Marika opens the door, and the party is already in full swing. Daryl welcomes them, and they sit to update the chief on the Demon King's verdict. The topic moves on to Gran, as he introduces the sleeping baby to Bashabaza, they are interrupted by Lady who confronts the demon for the damage he caused to the mithril mine. He stops his father who gets up to apologize on his behalf and makes a formal public apology himself promising to rectify his wrongs. His father apologizes too which surprises everyone, all the commotion wakes up Gran and he takes an immediate liking to Bashabaza. Gran Barza watches on smiling 
smiling as Daryl shows his younger brother how to hold the kid. Everyone is stunned as Gran calls his name perfectly, Bashabaza is the first person the baby has called by name. Kashida gets emotional about the moment as he welcomes a new bigger brother. Daryl feels like this is a moment that he has to capture, so he gathers everyone for Kashida to use his special artistic ability to paint a photorealistic portrait of the family. Marika made Bashabaza a quick eye patch for the picture so she offers to make a nicer one, but he is happy with her original one. They all eat and drink together as they enjoy each other's company. Early the following morning Bashabaza takes his leave to go explore and repent for his sins, Marika packs him a giant lunch for his journey. Later on that day, Daryl informs his wife that he is going to hunt for dinner. She gives him their power hug which he tanks, and they spring into the air as a family while they hold each other looking forward to the future. That brings the season to an end.